Well, recording now, you. so go ahead and go ahead and call us to order. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, today is the uh, May seventh, and uh, we can get started. Nikki's there, right? Yes. Okay. Can you hear us, Nikki? She's got her. Uh, She's got herself muted. So there she yes, is. Yes, I hear you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Dan, you? Ken Gordon, in. Oh, here's, Hello, here's Ken. Ken calling in. Are you in, Ken? I'm in. That's boom. Ken, okay, let's just take attendance. You can hear me, Dwayne? I can hear you. Okay, Stephanie. Yes. Tucker. I'm here. Okay, uh, Nikki, can you hear me? No. Yes. Ken, are you in? Ken. I'm in. Okay, good. All right, the only one right now that can hear us apparently is is Nikki and. It That's may have something to do with her making a copy of the uh a... Dan, Nikki Nikki answered you. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't well, I think we're having a bad internet connection, even though I've got five bars here. But uh <laughs> it could be us, could be somebody else. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, we have uh, approval of the minutes from last meeting. Okay with that. We have a second for that. Second. I'll second. Okay. Um, as far as guests are concerned, we don't really have any guest role here, members. So uh, we'll go right on to the uh, chairman's report. Uh, uh, you know, there's been uh, a, a lot going on in, uh, in the village in the past day or so, but I think right now. For our sake, we ought to just focus on our work and do what we have to do and uh, uh, without any concern with what else is going on and let that happen the way it happens. Um, so with that, uh, we could just, uh, unless anybody has any comments, we could just go on to the first item. All right, uh, Janet, you're up, Free Sergio. All right, they are redoing their front yard, or it's, this one's the new home build. Very small front yard. They are keeping a whole line of natural trees between the road right of way and the front yard. Uh, then they're doing mulching beds and lots of planting areas. They meet the requirements, so I would move to approve. Did you get a calc sheet? Uh, no, I did not get a calculation sheet, but there's, there's very little rock compared to what they're gonna be putting in with mulch and what's in the natural area. Okay, so just by looking at I feel confident that it meets the couch sheet requirements. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Okay. Who's the builder? It is Herrera's Properties. Okay. Is, is, is he, has he built many properties here in the village? I've never seen the name before. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, uh, you feel confident it meets all the minimum requirements? Yes. Okay. Uh, you Did you ask why we didn't have a calc sheet with it? Do uh, you know if there's any reason why? I didn't get a calculation sheet on any of my landscaping permits. Uh, okay, did you, did you call and request one? No. So uh, I, I, I assume you're doing some kind of uh, uh, arithmetic or mathematics to see it, that, 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 that they all uh, fit somewhere close to the minimum requirements. I'll check yeah, out the calculation sheets. What? I'll, I'll verify the calculation sheets. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Uh, uh, all in favor? Yep. Um, oh, how are we going to work this? Only if we work that denials. Is, how do we work that last time? I don't remember. Only Just denial. Ask for objections. Any objections? Okay, so if there, there are no objections, it's an approval. So recorded. Okay. Move on to the next one. Uh, Ken for Aquavista. Yes, uh, I have a question on this one. There was no calculation sheet, landscaping, or tree sent uh, from Beverly, so I could not uh, estimate on this. I did talk with the builder, and he had not received anything of that nature when he picked up the permit. So I don't know, Dan, exactly how to address this. Uh, you and I discussed um, uh, you don't know the railing. Hello? I did talk with the, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. I've talked with the builder about uh, his um, using wire for the uh, railing, and he assured me he's going to use a four inch by four inch <clears throat> they're going to have neutral tone um, siding, a vinyl siding, and brick. Is it, uh, and can the uh, roof will match. So it, I recommend it, approval with the understanding that we get a calculation sheet from Beverly's office on. Um, tree conservation and landscape. Uh, you're, you're going in and out, Ken. I, I can't pick up everything you're saying. I don't know if it's a problem on our end or just a general problem altogether, but um, is, is, this the, is this the one that the, uh, the drawing showed concrete signing? I asked the builder that and he said, I don't know where we're coming from on the concrete siding. He said it's very plain in my spec sheet that it's vinyl siding, not concrete. Um, it says on the drawings, Ken. I mean, that's pretty obvious, too. Well, I'm just telling you what the, the contractor said and what's it on his spec sheet that he's using vinyl siding only and uh, stone. <clears throat> they will both be um, uh, neutral in color. Yeah, okay. All right, so- And they're using, they're using four inch by four inch uh, hog wire for railing. Okay. Is it welded wire or hog wire? It's not the same. It's hog wire. Really? According yeah. to his spec sheet, four inch by four inch hog wire. And we're permitting that now. It's, 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 it's we started approving it in, in, uh, in railings. <clears throat> so, uh, and I've seen a couple of houses with it and it, it looks good and it works well. So, okay. it, it would be hard to, to do anything about it at this point in time, and there's no reason to do anything about it. It works just fine. Uh, I'm concerned about the, the count sheets and et cetera. I mean, what, 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 what we don't know is, um, do, do, you, do you feel that the, the, the glass... Do I feel what? It's, it's Dan and Ron's account. Uh, their, their connection is poor. So yeah. Dan, your, your guys' connection is poor. So you're coming in and out. Yeah, that's sudden like, sorry. Okay, <laughs> here, here let, me, let me clear up the, the calc sheet. I'm not sure why they're not in there, but we shouldn't approve or disapprove based on that calc sheet anyway. Really, it's just something for us to work with the builder on to make sure they know end of the day when we do landscaping permits that they know what's going to be required 
I'll, I don't know why they're not in that Dropbox. It looks like some of them are and some of them are not. So I don't know what happened with Beverly. I don't know what happened there, but I'll find out. Well, it's probably an item. Sorry, Dan. We're not approving any landscaping in this. Right. Is that correct? That's right. You're not. You're approving the house plan. So just move forward with the house plan and I'll get those um, calc sheets back out to you. I guess that uh, was. And just a comment, we might want to kind of revisit the calc sheet just a little bit. Uh, three of the four that I got were not really filled out correctly. They imply landscaping that we don't need or they don't require. Well, let me, okay. this, is, this is Ken Gordon, Dan. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. My question is, when the builder or contractor, I'm sorry, property owner or contractor picked up the permit, and are they to ask for a calculation sheet at that time? No. No. That's an internal document. It's only because the committee wanted it. It has nothing to do with the contractor or the builder. The committee had requested it to help them evaluate how many trees were going to be required, et cetera. But we've kind of swapped our rules a bit so that there's no, I mean, we don't require um, to fulfill those obligations until the landscaping permit is, is applied for. So. It's really just a guideline to help sort of when you're having the conversation with the contractor or builder to say, uh, based on this property, et cetera, you're gonna have some requirements in terms of trees and landscaping and, and so they'll know it on the front end. But it's, it has, the builder it doesn't care about it. It's only for the committee. Okay. The other thing, Ken, is the calculation sheet uh, shows us what, the, what this property is, is potentially going to look like uh, from now until the time after the, the house is built. In other words, if you look at it, the calculation sheet, it says that the back has to have 20 trees in it. Well, right now there's 50 trees back there. So now the builder can see that he needs 20 trees. If he tears down or attempts to tear down too many trees for no reason whatsoever, or whatever his reasons may be, then he has to replace them. And in the end, he has to have the 20 trees that are required by the couch sheet. So this may entice him to try mm -hmm. 20 trees, because then he won't have to worry about replacing them in the landscaping proposal. You understand well, that? My, my question, uh, Stephanie and Dan, is um, just like when I talked with the contractor, he asked me, is it my responsibility to ask for a landscaping uh, calculation sheet? And I couldn't answer that. I told him we had a meeting and I will ask that question. Um, so you're saying that um, he, he, the contractor, should ask when he picks yeah. up a permit no. if it's a new home build. No, he, he, he doesn't have to. It, it's, it's a tool for us to know how much we're going to accept later in the future. And uh, if we want, we can you know, give the information to the contractor and say, look, we may require around 20 trees here. So it, it would be him to try and save as many trees as possible. And he Well, I realize that. And I, he has I was just a, really, He has to make a follow-up. Follow-up. Follow-up, please. If 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 I when I get one of these permits without a calculation sheet, am I allowed as a committee member to call Beverly? You, sh you should, you should, yes. You should ask where the calculation sheet. It's like any other piece of missing information. Uh, but uh, 
it's just a tool to help you. Uh, well, I, I realize that. That's the reason I, I brought the whole thing up. But I, I'm reluctant to call a member of the POA without uh, Stephanie's permission or your permission, Dan. That's the reason I'm asking. Well, let, let me let me address. So, so Ken, if you ever if if you have any question, you should feel free to call me all the time. I mean, I'm your support Good. person through the staff. So, Good. and and since, Good. since we work together, I mean, always feel free to call me. I'll get whatever you need. But but back to this calculation sheet, so we can put this to rest. That was nothing more than a tool this committee wanted. It has nothing to do yep. with the contractor or the builder. And in fact, I really, it's, as I mentioned before, we had this conversation about trees and, and requirements. Not all lots are created equal. Trees are created equal. Not The requirements vary from property to property and, and it's just not a one size fits all. So I'd really like for us to revisit that anyways as a committee. Uh, as I was saying, you know, you have one big, beautiful, large oak tree. It requires lot more room to grow and thrive so you don't want to cram another 20 trees in the front yard near it just because our our calc sheet says they have to have so many trees it, there's just there's different things that come into play there and that is nothing more than a guideline for you guys to have to sort of help you in the field it's, it's not it's not for the builder it's not for the property owner it's really for you Nope. So you're giving me permission to call you directly. I am. Excellent. Excellent. I, I, I recommend approval for this permit application. Okay. So we're, we're approving the new home. You got the answers to the mesh. You got the answer to the siding. Uh, and, uh, uh, you, you filled out the front form uh, that conforms with the neighborhood, et cetera, and so forth. So you're recommending approval. Uh, anybody yep. concerns? Any denials? Okay, let's go on to the next. Let's have it as approved, and let's go on to the next one. That would be me, Todd Bouchard. <laughs> I'm uh, new to the board, or new to the committee, and uh, just wanted to introduce myself, sir. <laughs> uh, this one is 5 Pontaredra Drive. It's an increase of size of the deck, 5 feet wide and 4 foot depth, adding 120 square feet. This is a deck top, um, done by Mr. Anderson out here in the village. I talked to him, I've seen and visited a few of his uh, sites and what he proposes. And it's pretty much cut and dry. You're going to put in all new, uh, uh, they're going to redo, uh, come out and to the left with your uh, uh, deck. I gave, I believe, everybody copies of the proposal, what's going on. And he's going to put in all new handrail, new uh, stringers and stairs, and make sure everything's up to code. I think it's going to be painted the same color, and I propose that we accept this one. It all looks good to me. Any denials? All right, approved. Five Sierra. Thank you again, Ron. Okay, this one um, it started off with a hiccup right from the get go. Uh, he had told me I went out there and visited. I also sent some pictures on this. Uh, it goes through uh, on the gravel areas where the flagstone can be put in for the path. With this, he amended it and told him to make a change with the permit stating, and I believe uh, Dwayne, you sent me a copy revision they are now going with stamped concrete on this all the way down to the deck it looks like a uh, few curly cues I got some decks out there and they're gonna put concrete from the house deck to the two uh, party decks and then taking it down to uh, uh, dock. the dock area I can 
party I, decks. The party decks. The party decks only about uh, it's only four. An open deck, but it's only like six eight inches. Oh, okay. So it's uh, it's nothing substantial, but uh, I would say we're putting it in concrete and stamped concrete. It uh, everything looks cut and dried. I'd say it's approval. Okay, now Cooper has recently been allowing uh, uh, a concrete walkway in, in, in the easement by the lake. Um, before, a few months back, that was not the case, but we've been allowing it. So he's going from, from flagstone, which is basically placed and can be easily removed, to a stamped concrete, which means if there's access into that area, it'd have to be, you know, damaged. Um, to Cooper with any kind of uh, approvals or anything like that. He did get an approval from Cooper. Oh, he did? Not in this, but he told me he got an approval from Kirk Cooper to go ahead and put um, flagstone in there. Well, right, flagstone. with the revision, now it's concrete. Now, let, let me remind you guys. So I worked with Jody at Cooper, and they provided us with a disclaimer statement that was approved by their legal group and it's on our permit. So when people apply for the permit, they sign for the permit, they have acknowledged that they understand that if they uh, put construction, if they do any kind of construction in or, or any building in the easement, that it potentially could be, have to be removed by Cooper should work need to be done. So there's no additional approval from Cooper unless we go vertical with some sort of a, you know, right. construction. Yeah. But, but fencing, sea walls, paths, all that stuff is covered with that disclaimer. Very good. Okay, if there are no, no uh, problems or questions uh, and no denials, you can go on to the next one. Approved. Uh, Boat talk on seven Cabrillier. Anybody know how to pronounce that thing? <laughs> no. Cabrillier. And by the way, I, I have the ability to share my screen with you guys. So if you guys want to see a permit or see a picture or something, I'm happy to throw it up there. Just let me know. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> You're up. Hello. Uh, we may have lost Ken. Are you there, Ken? Yes, boat dock. I sent pictures to... Um, <clears throat> I think everyone. Um, they're tearing out the old boat dock, which is uh, fiberglass, and putting in a um, wood extension of uh, boat dock. Um, the shingles on it will match the house shingle. <clears throat> there is no. Um, <clears throat> no changes to the current flooring, just putting a um, new roof on there. Um, and it looks good to me. I don't I have no problem with, well, they're putting the roof with on. it at all. Boat dock? Is, is that what you're saying? A new cover? Oh. Like that. Repeat your question, Dan. Are you putting a, a roof over an existing swim dock or boat dock? No, they're they're tearing out. There is a roof now. It's all it's old fiberglass. So they're tearing that down and putting a um, wooden frame with shingles roof. Yeah. Great. Okay, Stephanie, can we see it? Um, see the pictures? Yep. Give me okay. a can you see it? Yep. So this okay. is the, let me, yeah, this is the, so basically they're saying um, materials, floral, treated pine, roof, four by six uprights and bands, two by six. Spruce or pine, 24 inch center plywood sheeting, natural shingles, color to match the house. 
Okay. okay. Uh, and then there's the. Okay, I was looking for the extent uh, along the property. Uh, okay, he's got plenty of room. Okay. Um, all right, looks fine to me. Uh, anybody else have any questions or problems? No objection. What was that? No, no. objections. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next one. The next one I have also. It's number eight, deck replacement completely, their deck, and I sent photos to everybody on that. The um, deck is rot rotting, both the stairway and the flooring, and the um, <clears throat> tile is, uh, has cracked and coming up. Let me come up. Uh, this is a... Um, Lady, 86 years old, her husband died in November. <clears throat> so her son is recommending that it's unsafe for her to be on that deck. And I agree, I wouldn't even walk up those stairs. Um, so the contractor is tearing it off and putting in new flooring on the tile and new um, railing, et cetera. Okay. I recommend approval. The tile work is part of this house too, correct? And I so didn't understand you. The tile work in front of the steps, is that part of the work too? No, not in front of the steps. Up on, up on the little step up to get into the sliding glass, I mean the, the doorway from the house. Okay. Okay, now uh, when, when you say they're re re replacing all the, the rotten stuff, the, uh, the railings don't need code. The railings will be brought up to code, right? Every code will be matched, yes. Can you all see the picture? Yeah. Yep. We'll yeah. Uh, there's a couple generations of there. repairs there. That looks like a maintenance issue, yeah. but I don't think you need a permit to do that. But the deck, yes. Can we see a picture of, of the raised deck? Um, let me make let me see if I can't figure out which one it is. <clears throat> is that is that it? I sent four pictures of that day. So it's a. Uh, can you guys see that? Yeah, I see it. Yes. Uh, now, now, can we go back to the verbiage as what he's doing? Someplace in there, he's, 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 he's got to say that the, he's bringing those railings up, up to code. I mean, it has to be either be mentioned there or we have to confirm it. Because. If he's going to just remove and replace it, that means he's going to put it back the way it is. Uh, don't don't forget when when we do our inspections, we we manage the code, so you don't really yeah, have to worry about that. I mean, they won't let it continue through without it meeting code. I understand that, but we we, we want to know in advance uh, that that uh, <coughs> putting it back for code. I, I I know you feel that that's an assumption, but if he's making the permit, well. Why not say replace the, the railings per code? I mean, you can say, say that on his description. Can you see the drawing I've got up there right now? I see the drawing, but what about the? You Actually, see where it we're says still got the, we're still two by two. Pardon? The photo is visible. Can, the can, that photo. can I see the description of what, yeah. of what he's doing? Yeah, sorry. I it, on my screen it shows the description, so I, I don't know. Hold on, just a second. Let me try again. Yeah. Dan, again, Ken has already said he's agreed that he's bringing up up to up to code. Can you see it now? Yep. Yes. Now I see it. <clears throat> so it's shown right there, a thirty-six inch high. It's showing the two by two balance 
clusters. I mean, it's showing that it. Railing to uh, 36i, yeah. Where do you see that? 36, two by six, two by four railings, two by two valid. Okay, that's, that's fine. Four inch spacing. Then, then, that, then that's fine. We're good. Um, uh, I, I have no objection. Anybody else? Approved. Let's move on to the next one. That's mine, 10 Ermelinda Place. Janet. Yes. <laughs> they are taking out failing yeah. grass because it's in the shade and they're replacing it with rock. A, they are also putting in two additional berms with plants in it. They already have a ton of bushes in mulched areas around what little grass they did have. I did not get a calculation sheet with this one either, but uh, simply eyeballing it, they're going to um, fall within the requirements. So I would move to approve. Is this a new home? No, this is, this is a, a pre-existing home, I believe. Uh, Ms. Griggs said that they had lived there for 17 years. She's very upset about losing her grass, but it's failing because of all the big tall trees around it. It's just not what it used to be. Um, so they're going to be putting Wachita rock in with berms and having plants in those berms. Okay, and I assume those berms are less, I mean, you, you don't know how high they it are. Takes up, it takes up half of the grass space that are, is now gonna be replaced by gravel, the berms, and then they have bushes and other planting beds all surrounding that area. Okay, looks okay. What, what, so I would move to approve. What is the blue line on there? They call it Excuse around. me? There's, a, there's a, uh, a blue line going around the house. What is that? Sorry. Kind of looks like Hold a sprinkler on. system. A what? Sprinklers. Oh, okay. Don't know that. Yeah, I, I would, that's about where their other planting beds are and it would go into where the lawn had been. So that would make I, sense. It's not, part of, it's not part of the new scope, okay. No, no. All right, fine. No objections? Okay, hey, recorded. Your, your recommendation to approve is- Yeah. You want the next one? It's me. Mm -hmm. Gotta find my own work. <laughs> uh, 12 Invader. This is a very simple uh, swim dock with a, with a, a little, uh, little ramp for a canoe or kayak. <clears throat> and it's. Um, It's a six, 16 by 12, uh, no problem in terms of uh, from the property line. And uh, it's very uncomplicated, very simple, I recommend approval. Can <coughs> see the picture? Yeah. Uh, he's the builder. And um, if there are no objections, we can go to the next one. We're recorded. 13 Pandilla, or Pen Pendil. Yes, that's mine, Ken Gordon. <clears throat> and, I, and I have some questions on this. Um, I sent photos. Um, you should have photos available. What they're doing, he wants to uh, put in a concrete driveway from the street to the right side of the house um, so that he can access with uh, by his truck down that side of the house uh around to under the deck <clears throat> he has a sliding glass door uh he wants to 
pull in a walkway from the sliding glass door down to his boat dock, which is uh, four feet wide. Um, my question is, <clears throat> is it permissible under the PCs for someone to build a driveway under an existing deck? Well, that's. I don't know how to answer that. That's not. I don't. I don't think that's as significant a problem as creating a new driveway off the street. I mean, he already has uh, an access to his house off the street. Um, it's widening his existing driveway. It looks like by about twenty feet. No, no, it, no. It looks like he's adding an adjacent driveway. Uh, he is. Is the space in between them? Yes, uh, some 12 feet between the two. <clears throat> and the current driveway, he's using the gravel on the um, driveway adjacent that would now be um, removed and um, put concrete in. Uh, he's, he's The clearance from his property line is some 15 and a half feet, so I don't see that that's an issue, but it does, uh, according to my photos and my walking with him, go under the deck down below the house. Um, so I, I just didn't know how to answer, I mean, even ask the question to you, is it permissible under PC? Well, there's absolutely no reason not to put a, a sidewalk underneath the deck so right. long as he's not going to bump his head. Um, yeah, that's that's correct. And it, even if he wants to bump his head, he can put a sidewalk underneath the yeah. deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just, I just uh, I'm trying to figure out how he intends to use this an existing driveway. And then he uh, looks like he's creating a new driveway all the way out to his property line. And then there's a 20 foot space in between. Is that supposed to be driveway also? I mean, does he access the new driveway from <laughs> the driveway or is he expecting to come onto that new driveway from the street? From the street. Well, that, 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 that's, that's not going to work with what he's submitting right now. He doesn't show any solution for the drainage. What's he going to go put a new uh, uh, culvert in there, extend it? I mean, he's in the public property there. We've never allowed that before. Well, I, I didn't know how to address it, so when I'm asking the question. Uh, because there is a, um, a small indention um, for drainage, there's no culvert as such. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes. we do. So that's the GIS imagery, it's that 7-2, it's this one right here? Yeah, yeah. So basically he's wanting to come up off right here and build out around. So like he's, he's talking about a second point of access, there'd be a gap and then another driveway right here. I mean, the, our the protective covenants in 10.1 discuss points of access, you know, other than circle drives on lots with frontages of 125 feet or more. So there's plenty of room for a circle, you know? And that was a, one of the recent changes that we just made. But um, I mean, basically, you're allowed one driveway entry off of a street. And Correct. Have multiple driveways coming off the same street. So, based on that, just that one rule alone, it wouldn't allow you to have a drive. I mean, if you wanted to widen that driveway, that's kind of that maybe slightly different because it's still one access point off the street but to have two different accesses basically be driveway gap another driveway basically he's building a road down to the lake it sounds like is that right is that is that about well, yes 
his driveway is only going to that back door of the house. Everything from there to the lake is really a four foot sidewalk. Okay. Yeah, correct. Still, you can't have two entrances on the property using concrete. Oh, Tucker, what's than... your what's your take on that, Tucker? <clears throat> Well, I think has to, you know what is what's it going to look like when he's done? I don't I don't see a reason why you couldn't have two driveways if it's if it's not unattractive or whatever. And, and the purpose, you know, if it's if it looks fine, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's not because it's yeah, a little but, not, it's, it's what yeah. it, what it needs to look like when it's done. I guess that's the question. Right. What how do you how do you determine that from this drawing and what we've got today to know what it's going to look like when it's done? <laughs> Well, I mean, if I drove by there and I think I'm sure that people drive by these <laughs> things, you guys drive by these things. I mean, I, I think you can visualize what it would, what it would look like. Uh, it's going to be on grade. Mm -hmm. uh, like so, you know, I mean, I, that, I think that's just basically an opinion, mm -hmm. you know, and then sometimes they, they do vary. <laughs> um, well, I, 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 I think it goes even uh, above that because somewhere along the line, uh, uh, there will be uh, one that that will uh, be a, a approved, and and then it's then it's hard to deny it uh, in in the future if, if if everybody down the street wants to put in more driveways. Uh, I, I think one of the problems here is he, he doesn't. Uh, this drawing does not show us how he's going to resolve getting on the property. The drawings are incomplete. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't sh show a driveway. It doesn't show a, uh, a drainage uh, solution. So, uh, uh, it, it, you know, we could approve the walkway, et cetera, but the entrance uh, off the street, I think, has to be denied. I've got to push back a little bit. I got two questions, if you don't mind. It actually looks like the right-hand side of that driveway may be a great big hedge. Might be what? Great, a great big four foot tall hedge. Yeah, a what hedge? Oh, uh, a a bushes. bunch of bushes all together. <laughs> See the shadow well, onto his That's why it would be dividing. That's I think why he's keeping that middle section. Okay. So, you know, if we looked but, at this this so, thing, this so lot. The road. But this lot actually qualifies under our circle drive kind of requirements anyway. So the second entry is not really pushing the point all that much. Uh, Did he say why he wanted this driveway to go to the back of the house? Yes, <clears throat> so that they can access uh, hand carts and um, materials to get to the basement and also down to the dock, uh, boat dock, uh, without having to walk down that grade on the gravel. Is he able to drive his vehicle on the gravel to drop off whatever materials he needs? I mean, there's a lot of people, including myself, I have 37 steps I have to climb down and to get to my backyard with any materials. I mean, well, he, he personally does not have a truck. His son has a, v, a truck. Um, it is not four four wheel drive. So they they're having trouble anytime they get something to or from the basement and or the um, boat dock area is my understanding. You guys well, I just don't want to set a precedent where, where we've got the, uh, the opportunity for people to start parking vehicles back down in there. Well, is parking, is parking, vehicles, is parking vehicles down there against, against compliance? Yes, it is. Well, that, we don't allow you to. That. Yeah, that, that that should take care of that. That's true. Compliance would step in, but you don't want to give people the false sense. I mean, you don't want to let them drive, build a driveway to the back, and then tell them you can't use it for a driveway. <laughs> so I, I agree. You'd have to stop the driveway part, like at the house level, so that it doesn't appear that it's allowed to go all the way to park in the back. 
Can you guys see the elevation lines I put up there? Yeah, they look like four footers. They're two foot. Two foot, all right. So it's not real, real steep. No. no. I might add that, you know, you said something and this has been something that the ACC's dealt with for years and they've always had this assumption if you allow somebody to do something, then somebody else asks to do it, you have to allow them to. That, that, is, that is true. But uh, if the situation is the same as one you've done before, why wouldn't you allow them to do it? And if it is different, you have no, I have no problem telling them why it's different and why I wouldn't approve it. So, so uh, if that was the case, we'd never get anything done because our situations, we want to prove what's, a, what's allowable sometimes because of situations. Yeah. You know, but uh, just, just food for thought. And, and that's why typically if you're going to approve something that's outside of the rules, we'll, we'll do it as a variance. So that, like you said, Tucker, so that, you know, later on down the line, you can say, well, the reason we did it, we allowed it as a variance because it made because sense. Because this, and yeah, and your, and, your, and your situation is not that way. Therefore, we cannot do that. If yours right. were the same, we would allow it again. Right. Um, and I think that's the way we've been working too. I mean, it, you know, you use the protective evidence as best you can, but knowing that there are many reasons when, you know. Exactly. Ken, may I ask you one question? Did you get any Please. sense that this this fellow would be okay to have a four foot sidewalk the whole way? Yeah. Uh, no, he's he's wanting to have access by the from a vehicle down to uh, the end of the house. He's, it's not the drive. It's not the walkway. He needs. He he needs or he's asking for a driveway. And, and, the, and, the, and it's not for parking on this, is it for parking on the side of the house? No, not, not to no. my understanding, because okay. he has that large garage. It's strictly for loading and unloading to the basement and to the boat dock. Well, then compliance step in. I mean, I, I don't think, again, if the, if it's not against the rules to put the drive, then it's okay. And should he use it for something outside of the rules of section six of the protected covenants, which is where, where we talk about storage of vehicles and parking of vehicles for compliance, then we would, we would cite them for a compliance violation. <clears throat> I think all, all the rules in, in the village have been forever is, is, is it basically says this is not, allowed unless approved by the ACC. Uh, having the two driveway rule is, is a good thing to have. That allows you to not allow it when, the, when, they, when you see the need or it, it's, it's not aesthetically pleasing or whatever the case may be or it's a problem. But, uh, but it's also okay to allow it if it's not that, I believe anyway. You know, most everything in the protective covenant says it's not allowed unless it's approved by the ACC. You can't build a house unless it's approved <laughs> by the ACC. Well, yeah. if we didn't have the rule that you can't do that, just like the driveways, we couldn't tell somebody you can't build a house unless we approve it. So uh, the rules are there, but we, we can approve around those rules. That's what, that's what we're here to do. You're right, case per case. <clears throat> Again, if it was me, I would look at this and, and decide, and I think anybody with good vision can, can see what it's going to appear to, what it's going to look like when it's done. And if you think it's okay, then it's okay. If you don't, then we, we explain why and go forth. Are you guys seeing the drawing or the, or the Google image right now? Google image. Okay. I guess I kind of like the notion of, of the approval but do it as the variance and go ahead and make part of the verbiage in that variance that it's not actually for parking. That's, that's a very good point. You just, and, and you've, you've said enough there. And, and if it ever happens, uh, the guy, we have it in writing. We told the gentleman you can't do this and here you are doing it. We, we have a problem. And that is good because uh, 6.5.3, let me read this to you because this is where it talks about where vehicles can be parked and it says family vehicles 
um, excluding golf cart trailers may be parked within road rights of way excluding or chosen. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Uh, family vehicles, including golf carts and single axle golf cart trailers, must be stored or parked within garages, carports, or driveways. This would be a driveway or other area approved by the ACC and subject to screening and location restrictions. So the ACC has the right to say yes, you can use it as a parking area, or no, you can't subject to screening and things like that. So if they decided they wanted to use it as an all-time parking space or parking area, then the ACC would have the right to require screening or some other, you know, way to mask it for the neighbor so it wasn't, you know, hurting the view from the next door neighbor. Exactly. That, that works fine, in my opinion. And I agree. I recommend approval with the variance by variance. Allowing for a second driveway entrance, right? That's your variance? Yes. Yeah, I know. That's me. All right. Unfortunately, we, uh, can, um, we're, we're missing a, a lot of this conversation. <laughs> um, so, um, and can somebody just re re repeat what we're trying to propose on this? That are, are we suggesting that we approve this? Dan, let me take that one. What I was going to put into our minutes was that we're going to approve this with a variance to allow the, the side of the house driveway with the understanding and restriction that it is not for permanent parking. Perfect. Uh, Excellent. I, I I I can't go along with that right now. Let's let's talk this a little little bit more. Uh, first of all, if he wants access to the back with a vehicle, why can't he enter onto his existing uh, driveway and, and just go around? Even if he has to cut a little hole through a, a a hedge bush to get to it, why does he have to go through the street? Because. Uh, if you look at the photographs that I sent you, the existing driveway goes directly into the garage. Right. And when you, and, and you got plenty of room to make a turn around the house. Well, what is going to be more attractive? Well, well what we're trying to do is, is discourage a lot of curb cuts all over the place. Uh, you have one, one entrance into your house except for a circular driveway and uh, more cuts just detract from it it just takes away from it it's uh it's, it's just an aesthetic thing uh it's a traffic condition i mean you have an entrance onto the property uh i don't i don't know why you need that entrance from the street i don't know why you just can't go up your driveway make a little turn and go around the house what's wrong with that uh, that keeps it all on your property. You don't have to come out and disturb the drainage in the street. You don't have to put extended culverts in. Uh, and you don't have to create another condition for the uh, public works department to do their maintenance work. Well, Dan, well, a couple of things. There, There is no drainage at the street. Take a look at those contour lines. This is a pretty flat lot. To do the, the thing you're talking about, more sidewalk, means he's got to completely disrupt that landscape, take out that 20 foot long hedge line. Looks like it's a it's an ancient little hedge line. And, and not, not 20 feet, line. 10 feet. Because he's only, he's only asking for a 10 foot wide road. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not hear you, Dan. I think, uh, as far as the contour lines are concerned, you can't you can't really go by the contour lines. The drawing show that there's a culvert in there. There's got to be a drainage. I mean, what would the culvert be doing there? Uh, there is no. No. Go ahead, Ted. Ken. There is no culvert to the garage uh, driveway. No, and I mean, and I, one of the one of the photos that I sent you was I. I took from the driveway, I mean, from the street. It's uh, directly from the street onto the gravel. Um, so uh, there's there's really no need for a, um, 
culvert as such, is there? I'm looking at the survey, Ken. The, Ken, the, the, the survey shows a culvert. That's probably just a survey that a, a engineer, a surveyor, done uh, to get the the plan, and they always put it. They always show them on there, and it's it's up to the builder, or it used to be up to the builder whether they needed it or not. And I think it's up to the public works now, and the builder. All plot plans used to show them because they they were just generic. Okay, but the uh -huh. contour lines we just mentioned, uh, somebody, uh, if we. It's obvious um, I'm, I'm just trying to get away from a second entrance and, and, and starting something that uh, is going to get out of hand um, because we've denied many, many uh, double entrances and um, uh, there was a, a, a reason for that in the past. and it, it looks like uh, uh, anybody could, could, could want to come in and just add something as long as it looks pretty. Um, uh, I, I just have a concern about just putting in another curb cut. Can did, can did the owner say what they need to take down that driveway? What type of material? Oh, uh, no, I didn't ask him. He just said loading to and from the basement. Uh, you know, I'm assuming things like couches and chairs and yada, 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 whatever you put in a basement uh, and materials that they take to the boat dock for loading on the boat to and from the walkway. There was, that's the reason for the walkway. So, no, I don't, I don't know. Let me make a statement. So, so Dan, to alleviate, can you hear me? Because you guys look almost frozen. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. So, 10.1.1, um, um, BI, 10.1.1 BI, and just made this change. This committee just recommended this change, and it was just approved by the board. And it states that in T3 driveways, mm -hmm with frontages of 125 feet or more may have two points of access. So your protective covenants allow for two points of access. And this, and I just said it, it's 135 plus feet across. So you don't have a rule that says they can't do it. You have a rule that says they can do it. So it's really just about whether or not you think you're making sure that they're, you know, that it's gonna look, that it's gonna look good. It's gonna be built properly, it's gonna match, it's all that stuff. But we allow two points of access if you have 125 feet or more of frontage. Well, what's the Excellent. Was on that again? 10.1.1 BI, we just approved, I mean, this was April 20th, recently. Oh, this is, this the is not street mine. frontage, no. lots with a street frontage width of 125 feet may have two points of access. Corner lots will be at the discretion of the ACC. That was revised April 20th of this year. So we've just made a rule to allow for this type of thing to happen as long as they have a wide enough lot at the street frontage so that it doesn't, the two driveways don't overwhelm the lot. And, and this is a little over 135 feet wide, 137, it looks like. We're, you should be good. Yeah. Yes. Do you know why that was put in there? Because I don't remember that. Uh, yeah. Was that to involve the circular driveway? Yep, it was. That was really, that was the reasoning behind it. But the rule doesn't say it has to be circular. It just says you can have two points of access if you have 125 feet or more. So there are other cases where it's not a circular. I mean, I can think of a couple where we have people with a storage building, for example, and they wanted to have a drive down to their, their you know, separate storage building and things like that. So. It's, I mean, we allow it. I guess my bottom line is that our protective covenants allow it and it's 10 feet. It's, I'm not sure what you would use to deny it, to be honest with you. The main thing is, is not allowing um, it to be used as, a, as an all time parking pad on the side of his house, because we don't really want that. So I think that's where you'd have to, you'd approve the driveway and then you can make the statement in the conditions that the ACC just, you know, 
it's not approving this as a secondary drive parking area. Excellent. I like that. You know, if that, if, if that was the, the, the intent and, and that's the way it's interpreted, I can go along with that, but I still think he needs to show a solution on the drawing. Um, if he's going to put in uh, all the way to the street, he should show it and he should show how it's, how it's connected to the street. He just stops it at his property line. I mean, well, I think it's, I think it's obvious if he's going to get on it, it's going to have to go to the street. Yeah, well, he, he's I he's just access road there too. Well, I mean, what's the problem with not with, with him showing it? Well, it's in one of the photographs. You know, but Ken, you're saying the drawing. I don't have the photograph, Ken. I I looked. I didn't get those photos from you. If you want to email it to me, I'm happy to put it on the screen. But I don't have them. Uh, Dan and Dan and Dwayne have them. So, well, I'm not at my uh, not, I'm not at my computer, and I, I was sent the photographs not knowing what the purpose was. So, it, it, uh, I, I comment right now, but uh, even the photographs should show that there's nothing there, right? Yeah, that is correct. Why don't we do this, Dan, to, to satisfy your your need? There, we can we can reach back out to this homeowner, and we can we can make that notation on the drawing. What they've done is they've used the existing survey plat from back in whenever this was, and it, this is not recent. This is old, and they just cut. You know, they just drew in from the original as built plat survey what they wanted to do here. So we can we can ask them to you know show the flare out at the end that shows how it connects to the street if if you want. I mean, like Tucker said, it it's not like it can't. It has to connect to the street. Um, and the and the public services department through the permit application, it's clear on there that they have to come out and size the culvert. So we we have control of that already. If there's a culvert needed, then the public services department is going to tell them what that size is. Because beyond that property line, it's road right away. And very honestly, I think you guys made an honest effort to show us all of that anyway. I don't think he's trying to put anything over on us. Yeah, I well, maybe not. Really uh, probably not. Uh, but w w if you give this to an inspector, what's he inspecting when it comes time to see the connection to the street? I mean, the, the flash he could come up all the way over to his property line, and, and he could take up the right of way and use it as a, an access uh, drive to his property. I'm just exaggerating here. Um, yeah, no, public works is going to control that. He can't do public works, that right of way work, somehow in, in dire violation of what's obvious. <laughs> we're, we're, we're giving him permission to do it without having anything on the drawing showing what he's doing. No, we're not. We're, we're saying that he can do on his property what he showed us, what he wants to do on public right of way public works is going to control anyway. We can get, we can get them though, Dan, I, I hear what you're saying. You're wanting to know how he's going to tie into that existing driveway from the road, this new driveway from the road. So is there going to be a circle, you know, like 20 feet section between the property line and road right away? Yeah, I, going to be, or is it going to be all concrete all the way across? What is it going to be? I hear what you're saying. We can ask them. We can ask them that, and we can fill that in on the drawing to make sure we're we're clear. But it, I mean, it's not noted on there. But we can we can get that. We can get to that. So we're, sure. we're, gonna, we're, we're talking about improving it at, as a variance or in accordance with the the current. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not a it's not a variance. We allow okay. this. So so then let, let's put in the stipulation column that the. Uh, uh, the, the actual intersection point of the new driveway in the street that needs more development or something. You want to, uh, the best way to put it in this stipulation column. Well, we, we can we can approve it with the notation that it's not to be a, a parking driveway, not to be because on the side of the house, not to be uh, on the side of the house. It's for it's for loading and unloading only, and then you can put that. Um, um, 
that we want to see how it connects to the street. Is, is that what, if that's what you're asking? That's what I'm asking. Okay. We can put that. Okay, I like what, that. What exact verbiage do we, we want to explain to put in there? Or when do you have a... Uh, let me let, let me go ahead and write it up and we'll circulate it for approval. And why don't you all comment back if you don't like my version? That'll work. It's sort of hard to do this all in conversation. Well, I you like what to. Stephanie said. You don't have Personally. to send it to you don't have to send it to me. Okay. Um, Okay, the rest of the side Actually, we, we may have to, Tucker. If you're a member, we're going to need the quorum. Okay. Okay, any any other objections? All right, so it's approved. Let's go to the next one. And that will be me, and very honestly, 1618 and 24 Siega are the new little subdivision. Um, it is, I don't think there's a completed house in there yet. Uh, everything is a very straightforward, these are all vaguely 1800 square foot homes, all being built by the Alliance. <clears throat> um, uh, earth tone house colors and weather water, black and gray shingles, uh, mostly brick I think yeah. all brick. Brick on all three uh, all very straightforward there's a nice tree conservation plat attached to each that actually goes above and beyond what we really require um, in my mind everything is straightforward I have got a comment the, I do have landscape calculation sheets for all three of these all three of these re, uh, have a whole section filled out on their backyard requirements. And none of these houses require any backyard landscaping or trees or the rest of it. It's, it, it's a nice effort. They went through a lot of work, but it, it really implies something that we don't even ask for. It probably should get fixed, especially if we're going to hand it to the Reliance. We're not going to hand it to anybody, but I'll make sure they don't do it. That's internal okay. document. Well, and if it goes out with the inspectors, I don't know if they think they need to look at it. So yeah. that was my only concern. Otherwise, I recommend the approval of all three of them. Uh, I've been to the lots. None of them have started clearing yet. So it's it's a good good permit. Dwayne, uh, we already have a precedent on this uh, complex, right? One house has already been approved. Is, 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 isn't that correct? One. Yeah, more than one. They, they've got three lots cleared and are beginning construction. Um, but I don't really, I don't recall exactly what those names and numbers are. No, but I mean, I think we already approved the, 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 the concept that they're developing here. And these are all somewhat cookie cutter type approaches, aren't they? A little bit, yes. And Stephanie, I'm going to ask for your help. <laughs> yeah, so because Renaissance purchased all of those lots and Renaissance is developing all or building on all of those lots, unless they sell them to somebody else or, or bring in somebody else to build with them. Um, they have three or four plans, which is what you guys are going to see here in just a little bit, some other house plans that we're going to just pre-approve for them as part of that Builders Guild program. but they prepay for all of these permits they pay for all 24 here and they're submitting them one at a time now for your approval once they figure out which ones are going to build on which lots okay well Dwayne's recommended approval right for all three that would be uh and i i missed the early part of this that uh, uh six, yes. 18, 16 18 <coughs> Sierra, and 24 Siega. Okay. Uh, uh, any objections? Okay. Porter. Next one is Ron. 20 Lawson Naval. 
This one, uh, I sent some pictures to everybody on this one. Um, it is a deck that's going above, or it's coming off of a second story, um, second story landing. And yes, right there and off to the left. They're gonna come out with the stairs and then the landing is going to be right above the window. It's gonna be a four foot by eight foot landing and then come straight down, yes. Yeah, and uh, none of the uh, material will uh, be fastened to the house. It will sit independently other than the steer stringer is gonna be tied into the uh, deck up above. So they won't have to get into the EFIS at all. Um, um, I asked him since they're four foot stringers, four foot wide stringers, he is going to use uh, one of them is a five foot stringer and the other one is a three foot stringer. So he's using uh, three two by twelves on the three footer and four of them on the five footer. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a nice. Uh, if we come down off of that. Very solid. <laughs> yes, very solid. Yeah. I was well, that's, with that. that's because of the independency of it. And yeah. you're going to basically make it the same earth tones as what the uh, railings and everything. They've got a material list on there. Um, the railings are 36 inch high, two by two balusters, four inches on space. Um, everything all is treated pine. So I have. Uh, vote for approval. Any objections? Okay. Nice and easy. What's next? Tony Viedra. This is a new home. This is a new home. Um, it's lake on property. They're keeping several trees on the lake side. A whole bunch of trees in the front coming in off of the roadway. The driveway will be to the left side of the uh, property. The house will blend with the neighborhood. It's gonna be red brown brick with a black gray shingle. I would move to approve. Well, you don't have a site plan. Uh, I've, got, I've got stuff here. I've got the plat of survey. I've got the where they're going to keep the trees. But there's no driveway shown. I've got it in my packet. I don't, I, it's I, going to be on. It's going to be on the left side, going up toward um, the three-car garage. I see what you're saying, Dan. I don't see it on mine either, unless there's something. Do you guys see a driveway on that? Are y'all seeing my screen? Yeah, yeah I, I see what you're I see where it's going to be, but I don't see it. Dan, do you have a calculation sheet? Hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I found a different one. Hold on. Here's the, there's another <laughs> document. Did, did it change? Awesome. Did it change yep. for you guys? Yeah, yes. scroll it up. There you go. Perfect. Oh. Cad drawing. Yep. Okay. Nice. It's going to, in the front yard, it would require 17 trees. There's going to be way more than that. And the backyard, since it is lakeside, it would need um, uh, 13 trees. And they have. Ten marked off so far, but that does not mean that when they do their final landscaping that they cannot add additional right. trees. That's fine. That's fine. Um, okay, uh, and uh, you looked at the neighborhood and all that, and the colors and all that. They all, you know, fit in with it, with the area. Yes. So I would move to approve. Okay. No. Any denials? All right. Let's go to the next one. Page two. <laughs> Paul Hobby. Paul, hey. Good day. 
Oh, that's me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Paul R. Reed here next door. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> it can't be much simpler, although things could, uh, could always uh, turn into a problem. But it, it, this is a simple 10 by 16 swim deck. Uh, the, uh, the, the owner wishes to uh, relocate the dock from where it's shown on the site plan or where I put it on the site plan. Uh, do you have the site plan? Uh, can I'm you getting it. Yeah, just just want to explain what's going on. Oh yeah. Okay. Right now, where where it's shown, and, and and this is a tremendous piece of property. It's gorgeous, actually, and there's plenty of frontage on the lake. Uh, oh. But uh, he wants to take it and 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 move the dock left, just past the point, and put it on the other side of that point on the left. Uh, I I extended the uh, the property line out into the lake. He's got 40 feet there, 50 feet. Uh, clear, so he can locate that dock almost anywhere around there and still meet all the minimum requirements. So um, uh, this is uh, pretty simple. It's a Nick Daly job, uh, and uh, uh, we approve it. Any problems with it? None. Is anybody yeah, yeah. Yeah. Recorded. Okay. Now I get the next one too. By the way, we have uh, banana muffins sitting here. I see Dwayne's eye popped up. <laughs> I did not catch that. Banana something. Banana muffins. Ah. If you wait a minute, you'll see me eating one of them pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this next one is uh, Manzanera's. It's a little uh, upgrade of their uh, landscaping. Uh, it's a it's a nice landscape job to begin with. Uh, they have some berms, and uh, all they want to do is 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 contain the mulch uh, inside uh, a little rock edging. So they they're just putting uh, some stone around it, the berms and uh, just to trap the mulch in so it doesn't get all over the gravel. Uh, they don't show it, but the walkway that goes from the house uh, to the driveway, that also is going to have stone on both sides so that things don't run across the driveway. And they're going to put a little stone along the driveway going to the to the property line again just so that things don't wash out onto the stone and they stay it's really a a, a water uh, control uh, procedure uh, and uh uh and, and that's it it's really it's really that simple just putting in that stone and uh, a little bit of artificial turf in the back uh where they can sit underneath the tree about it i uh, recommend approval No objections? Okay. Go forward. Who are you? Uh, 24 Gozar. This is an extension of an existing dock. Uh, they have an existing... Uh, Guys, I've lost sound. I can't hear any of you. You can't hear us? I guess somebody else say something, see if she can hear somebody else. Janet, it, um, Janet, we can hear you. Let me see if I can't message her. That's zapped. No, it was the moon, full moon last night or today. <laughs> All right, I've got sound back. 
Welcome back, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> the dock, the existing dock is a 16 by 16 dock. They just want to drop it down and add an extension on two sides. Uh, the dock uh, uh, will extend uh, six foot one way, six foot the other way, and uh, 18 foot long. Um, and uh, do you have the drawing? Does anybody want to see it? Okay. So yeah. this will move it from 20 foot into the lake to 26 foot into the lake? No, it goes 20, 24 foot into, uh, 22 foot into the lake. Yeah, do you have the I'm getting it. Okay. Got it. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I just added wrong. Okay. Hey. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. You see it? Yeah. Okay. It, 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 again, it's, it's just a drop down for them to get on easier, probably uh, with a kayak and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's nowhere near the, the, the lines, the properties, so shouldn't be a problem. I recommend approval. What's the next one? We've done Siega, so it's uh, Janet again. Alteza 25. 25 Alteza. Basically what he's doing is just refreshing his gravel that he's already got in the yard. Um, he's adding some some additional gravel to help with the especially on the sides of the house. I would move to approve. Crack, crack, yeah, we got the picture now. It looks easy. What, what's there now? Gravel and mulch with plants. So he's just he's updating and refreshing his yard, adding a little additional gravel to help with some erosion. Okay. All right. It's, well, that's Can you all hear me? It's more, of, yeah. I'm just thinking it's more of a maintenance project than anything else, but but fine. All right, uh, now I can hear you all. You, you can you can what? Here, the 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 cut out, so I missed probably the last one and a half minutes of conversation. Uh, that's probably on our fault. Okay, there's there's, uh, there's landscaping in the front and back, right? Um, and then, it's yeah, an interior is, lot. He's got common property behind him and uh, lots, uh, unimproved lots on either side. Okay. You recommend approval? Yes. Okay. Any objections? <clears throat> Next one is uh, <clears throat> 27 Alicante. This is a desperately needed upgrade to a <laughs> very poorly built deck. It's, it's, that's all it is. Uh, this thing was, looks fairly poorly constructed initially. Uh, I do have a picture, it's just pretty horrid. All they are doing is replacing something with essentially the identical thing, except new posts, new lumber, new decking. It, it's a complete rebuild of something that is in very, very, very bad shape. What is it? It's cantilever over onto the water? It's mostly on land? It, he's actually going to enlarge the on land piece right now. <laughs> it's, it's got a, a two by six on land and the rest of it out over the water. He's going to put a little bit more decking, like two feet more decking back on the land side. But um, I'm sorry, there's a picture. I can't quite show it to you, but it, it's, it's a, yeah, okay. There it is. This is that interior thing. It's uh, because of the shape of the lot, he's still like 25 feet from each of the property lines on the outside. The extension he may or may not fail on, but you can see that problem in that corner. 
Uh, to be honest, the neighbor's dock actually crosses the extension. So, uh, this is it, replacing something that's code. been there for, you know, it looks like 20 or 30 years. Uh, it's, it, it needs to be done. It will be an improvement. It's, I, I absolutely recommend that we approve well, this one. Yeah, even if it doesn't reach the, the 20 foot, even if you don't get it, from the extension of the property line. Every owner uh, on a lake has a right to a dock, so, and it's already an existing dock, so right. I'm really extending it any further, correct? So, yeah. uh, and so again, that, that neighbor to the left on what we're looking at, uh, you know, he's not interfering with that dock, if you will, the north side or the right side of that neighbor's dock is not a boat parking slip it gets too shallow. So this is not interfering with the neighbors and it, it is in need. Okay, you recommending approval? I do. Any denials? Next one. Okay. This in 27 Kodai's Lane. This one here what they've got is, this is as far north as you can possibly go. And back behind is absolutely beautiful, where it's uh, off of uh, Hot Springs Village territory. Um, they've got a young girl, they're about two years old, and she keeps putting her ankle on the over, it says riprap, but it's oversized. And they've taken, they're taking out all the oversized, which is really And uh, it's about two to three and a half inch rock. And what they want to do is they want to uh, put sod in. <laughs> Perfect. And it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> it's a heck of a fall down through there. I, I sent some pictures. Um, and it shows that, uh, you can see where they had started cleaning the rock out and he's doing it himself. Uh, I know he wants to get the, uh, sod order and get it put in for his daughter. So I, I don't see it. I think it's a major improvement to the, uh, property and I would vote to have it, uh, approved. Any objections? Sounds like a no brainer. Okay, next one. 28 for Jada. Uh, this is a new uh, uh, a new home and it's uh, it's it's not a new home, it's a landscaping uh, project for a new home. Uh, I, I didn't get a calculation sheet with this, so uh, I, uh, just for my own use, I went and and, uh, and did one on my own, just to see how the how the numbers work. And this uh, carriage did a pretty good job with this piece of property. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he he meets the the, the minimums uh, in the front. Uh, I. I calculated that he needed, uh, you see, 1,540 square feet, and he comes up with actually 1,560 square feet <laughs> uh, mulched area. So he just about made it. Uh, he shows a lot more trees than he has. On the left side of his property, <laughs> all those little dots are existing trees, but he kind of borrowed the trees from the property next door and kind of pushed them close to, the, to his house. Those trees do not uh, really exist on his, on his property. They're on adjacent property. Unless, of course, the, uh, the, the stakes are in the wrong place. But in any event, uh, he's still, he's still uh, <laughs> pretty close to, to what is required. Uh, the requirement is, uh, is uh, five trees in the front and he's got nine. So he's good there. His mulch area is good. Now, in the back, 
is the golf course. And the golf course is very close. There's very little property in the back. And the cart path comes up very close to his prop, uh, to the house. It's only, uh, you know, about 30 feet away. Uh, the out of bounds marker is only about 25 feet away. Um, so he doesn't have much room to work with in the back. And, and between the cart path and his house, is there's a drainage area. So there isn't much he can do with the drainage area. So we need to cut him a little bit of slack on, on the back here because he just doesn't have that much to work with. Uh, according to the uh, calculations, uh, he's required to have nine trees. And if you count two, two inch caliber trees, which he, which he left, two to three inch caliber trees, he's got 15 back there. And the only thing he's a little short on is the mulch area. And that's because, again, the drain is just taking up uh, much of the area back there. He really doesn't have that much to work with. Now, he does not show any foundation bedding. And this is a golf course. And we do require foundation bedding uh, on, on, on the back. Uh, and if he adds the foundation bedding, he will come very close, if not right on, the minimum requirement uh, that the recalc sheets show. Um, so I, no reason why we shouldn't approve this, subject to foundation bedding uh, added. And he would have to add that uh, anyway in accordance with the landscaping uh, in the uh, covenants. Then everybody get that? Or, or have I confused people? Yep, that makes sense, Dan. You're just saying that uh, he would, because because we require foundation planning on the back side if you're on a golf course or a lake, he needs to, that needs to be noted on the permit as a condition. So we're approving, noting that he has to have foundation plans on the back side of the property too. Exactly, and that will bring them up to meet all the minimums according to my calculations. Yeah, okay. that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm saying we should approve it with the condition that he needs to add the foundation planting, at the bed with the plantings. And, uh, is, this a new, is, it, is this a new home or is this a, yes. what's he doing here? Brand new. Okay, all right. New carriage home, Tucker. Okay. Yep. I know there's, I think they just cleared another one next door and I was confused, yep. uh, I think, on this street. Mm -hmm. Are you guys seeing the are you guys seeing the imagery or are you seeing the permit? The image. 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 Okay. And this is 2020 imagery I'm looking at. So this is the most recent. There may be something going on right here right now. Yeah. I don't know. I think that lot was just cleared. I'm not sure. Can you the show the site plan? plan? Yep. Can you show us the, the plot plan? I can. Yeah, I had that other plot last, last time. It was next. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I guess when I when I mentioned before, let's scroll it down yeah, a little more. No, the other way. <clears throat> That's it. Well, all those trees on the left, on the side of the house, really are just off the property. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, the trees that he shows on box, they're all there. But there's additional trees there that, that he doesn't show. And I've, I've marked them on my drawing and I've counted them up. So there's, there's actually more trees shown than what he, he shows. And uh, he does meet all, all the, the minimum calculations that we need. The only places in the back where he calls for that rock, right along the back of the house, he needs to have a three or four foot wide foundation bed uh, for his plants. And that bed will increase the amount of mulch that he has. And you don't see mulch, <laughs> but there is, there is mulch around there. I have photographs of it, and I calculated the size of it. And uh, he, if he adds that foundation bed in the back, he will meet the, the, the requirements. So uh, I'm recommending a, approval with the statement that 
in the stipulation that the foundation bed uh, be added in the back, in the rear of the house. Got it. No objections, it's recorded. Okay, if there's no denials, then we move on. All right. 31 Vargas Way is a, is a really nice, pretty older house on the lake. Forgot which lake this is, but it's on the lake. Coronado. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this was, again, this has a, a really nice, well constructed old uh, seawall built on the property line. And in that slightly scroll up just a hair, you can see that this thing is a couple, <laughs> two, three feet off of the seawall there's some open space and a little connected dock. Right now, everybody else in that cove comes into their boathouse from the lake. This particular boathouse comes around the back, goes up toward his neighbor's boathouse and turns and goes in sideways. This guy is only requesting that uh, he do a little bit of remodeling and rebuilding to turn his slip to be perpendicular to shore instead of parallel to shore. Um, yeah. Uh, and again, he just wants to flip this thing. Uh, he's, <laughs> if you pull up a little plat on his or drawing on his permit, it shows it maybe a little bit better. And, and essentially, he's going to leave that structure in place. And on the lower right side, he wants to extend out and remove one of his uh, pilings, posts. Yes. And so in the, you can see the, uh, the thing that is, essentially parallel to his uh, shoreline, his, uh, his seawall. This thing on the upper right is where he would like to extend this thing roughly nine feet. That will put him 29 feet into the water. I certainly think it's a very reasonable thing that fits his existing boat he will re he'll build that nine foot by 16 foot, I think, uh, expansion, add the little bit of roofing, and be able to pull in more directly. <clears throat> this essentially will require a one foot variance from our 28 foot vision, but it seems absolutely justified in my view. <laughs> With that provision, I would recommend it be approved. So that's, that's the thing, you'll just have to approve it with that one foot variance, okay? And kind of like what Tucker was saying earlier, Layer will say, when if somebody else wants 29 feet, um, you know, based on the conditions is why you allow that sort of thing, not necessarily. Yeah, that it was done as a variance. Yep. Uh, I can put notes in for the justification, but I think the one foot variance would be just sufficient for our notes. This is a good example of why we're doing this is because the dock is already existing and so yeah. forth. If he was building this dock, we would not allow it. Yeah. Correct. So and all of his neighbors have actually done it considerably different in ways that we are not very happy about either. Well, the good, the good news here is that there's, if this is the spot that I think it's in, uh, there's very little traffic back there. First of all, yeah. it's barely two feet deep, if it is two feet deep. Uh, nobody goes back there. It doesn't go anywhere except to service the people who live there. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it's just that very, very rarely you see a boat back there. So the only ones that would be there are the people who, who live there. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, under that circumstance, uh, I, I wouldn't have a problem approving this as a variance, though, and it should be stated as variance.
Any any objections? Nope. <clears throat> okay, can, can we approve that as variance? So nope. Tim? Hello. Yeah. 33. Why do you say that? Pendilla. Yes, I have um, several questions, one of which, uh, <laughs> let me describe. This is a very, very old deck that um, the property owner had um, contacted a deck uh, contractor named Alan Cleaver Cleaveridger. Cle okay. If that's how I pronounce it, that's what I wrote down in a note. Um, the stairway is completely rotten. In fact, I, I just refused to walk down the stairway to take a picture from the ground level. I asked the property owner, if you're going to extend this deck and, um, rebuild it, did you talk with your deck contractor about distance to the grinder and to sewer and so forth. And he said, no, I guess I need to get back with him. I said, yes. And that's just my opinion uh, because it's responsibility of the contractor to deal with this if it's uh, close to a grinder or the sewer. Yesterday, Sarah Down Downey, Downey? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess of uh, Public Works wrote uh, Dan, I mean, uh, Dwayne, with a note saying the deck project was denied by Public Works. The contractor has submitted a new plan for approval. The new plan uh, just calls for replacement of the current deck and the stairway resurfacing except they're bringing it into code my question i guess to stephanie is um and and the uh, the contractor alan submitted that uh that to the property owner that hey we will just resurface based based on the um denial from public works my question do we need a new permit application on this, Stephanie? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we do. If they're basically they're rebuilding an existing deck, so we we need to do the inspections and all of that along the way. So yes, it requires a permit. Well, Stephanie, um, why why couldn't we just uh, approve what's been submitted and say the new addition is denied? Well, they withdrew the new addition. Well, we've got, but it's still shown on so, the, on so we've got essentially drawings with what they're trying to do now. Say that again, Dwayne. I think that their existing permit, if you X out the addition, that fill in spot, is right. what they're asking for now. And that's what I'm saying. We allow that and just say that the new addition part is denied. And we're saying okay for everything else. I don't know why we can't approve that right now. You, you can. Yeah. Okay. Can uh, can we do that? Just say everything everything on there is okay except the new addition part of it is denied. Yes, and that was my question. Do we need a new permit? No. Application. Okay. I good. I, I don't see why. Then, as long as we qualify that the new addition is denied and, right. and everything else is okay. That's fine. You can do it that way. Approved to replace an, uh, the existing deck. Yes, and the stairway. And the stairway. Right. And so they're all said, rotted. He already says he's going to put in 36 inch high and, and, and per code. So it, it's, all, it's all fine. Yeah. He's replacing the railings up there. That's what he says, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
It's I'm, fine. Like it you said. It would make okay, okay, Dwayne, we could just say approved ex except addition. What I actually wrote, Dan, I'm sorry, Dan. Uh, yeah. What I actually wrote was that the owner has withdrawn the addition area from the permit request. All other is approved. Fine. Good. Thank you. Next. I didn't know how to address it. Okay, next is 34 Andorra uh, seawall riprap. This is uh, kind of a holdover from when I had a couple uh, months ago where we had a deck or a dock that was going to be going in, but I noticed that there was no seawall or riprap. So they are working on that. Um, they've cleared the lower part of the lot. They're going to be putting standard riprap in along the frontage at the lake. They will not block a natural creek that feeds into uh, Lake Balboa. I would move to approve. Uh, Stephanie, uh, I thought at one time John Froning uh, uh, made made the statement that uh, you you don't start the seawall at, at at the end of your property. You're supposed to start it inside your property. Uh, it looks like all of the seawall is going outside the property. Um, is, is that the standard standard? It, 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 it's riprap and at the property stakes they're within their property boundaries i mean it, it's just like honestly what there's this mean pool level and the property boundaries can be in or outside of that pool level you basically have to go by the water level when it's at full pool that's really so where it's you're where the water, it's where the water hits the rock is where your property line yeah. should be when it's at when it's at full pool level okay all right, <laughs> has, Steph, Stephanie, has that been cleared up? Yep. Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean by cleared up? Well, I mean, I think there was in the past denials and all kinds of uh, discussion back and forth about where exactly can it go. And I mean, like, you don't want to put a seawall <laughs> at the property boundary if the property boundary, according to that stake, is not at the water's line. It needs Correct. to be at the water line, you know, at mean pool level. And, you know, Ernie Deaton has talked with this and others. I mean, it's, it, those property boundaries can be kind of off a little bit depending on where that pool level, you know, they, they surveyed, did all the, most of these lakes were full. So it changed a little bit. Is that right, Tucker? I mean, am I saying that right? Yeah, the, all, all the platting and, and lots were, were, the lot lines were one foot above the high water line and wherever that, point was is where the property line ends. There's one house on Lake Balboa a lot, or Lake uh, Coronado, the property line is actually 100 feet from the lake, but because that's where it actually ended up being, but it's still a lake lot. They obviously need to put their seawall down at the lake. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's just the way they planted everything. It's one foot above a uh, high water line, and that, that can be a way back there in some lots that are flat. Now on a cliff, it's right there at the lot line. But so that's what was confusing for a long time or for a little for a couple of years. No, I mean, 99.9% .9 of them are not what Tucker just described where you're 100 feet off. That would be an exception. No, that, that's right. a, definitely right. an exception. Yeah, mostly they're just like this. Yeah. They're, they're off by a few feet. And so you just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so Janet, you're recommending approval? Yes. Okay, any objections? Next. Yeah. <clears throat> this is 35 Marilla Way. This is an older home with a very, very small back patio above the lake. Or I forgot which lake. Canela, I think. Anyway, small little lake. This thing. Murillo's on Coronado. Okay, that's fine. Um, 
Again, what he's got is a brown colored roof, sort of a light tan colored painted uh, siding, painted and maybe some vinyl. But essentially, some time ago, a um, sunsetter roll away deck covering was added to this. That has not proved to be very efficient or effective. The wind coming off the lake gets way underneath this thing, tries to rip it off over the roof. Uh, it's, there's a few pictures out there, but effectively this thing is not working out. He needs to get rid of it and he proposes to replace it with something a little different than what he's actually shown us on this plat. He actually is, would like to essentially put a pretty flat roofed little, um, and again, this is a 16 foot by 18 foot deck, pretty small little beast. Uh, he's going to do a uh, three inch metal tube a uh, couple of posts and uh, framing decking above it and then put on this brown, pot, brown colored, brown painted metal sheet roofing. It's on a less than one on 12 pitch um, and it will drain to the right instead of to the front as it's shown in that picture. If it drains to the front, it goes down onto some more of his deck and onto his staircase. It's not a real good spot for it to drain to anyway. By moving this off to the right, the drainage actually is improved. It falls on some bare land. This thing is sitting up very high. Um, none of, no one can see the top of this thing unless they're in an airplane or a drone. Um, this thing has a, that's the picture of it that's on the screen now. Uh, the boat house is sitting out there. The deck that we're talking about is that little notch on the back side of the house. Thank you, Stephanie. And uh, again, that will become a sort of a light brown, supposedly a tad darker than the boat cover but uh, you know, essentially a brown, reasonable match to the roof color. And again, because of its elevation up there, no one will ever see it. Even the neighbor down there just to the bottom of the picture essentially cannot see this thing from his deck. And he's aware it's going in and he has no objection to it. Again. Well, historically, we've always denied the metal roofs. I also had another one for a metal roof over on Balboa, same issues. You'd have to be in an airplane to see it, and it was denied. We've also approved them. Uh, so again, this, this is one, you can see what that roof is to build this thing out with a traditional roof is going to make this a very, very expensive exotic project. So it's a shed roof? It's a metal roof. But it's, not, it's, not, it's not a gable roof, it's, it, it's a shed. It just slopes one way. It's a one-way sloping roof, uh, very, very low slope. It's eight foot ceiling houses. So by the time he gets below the soffit, this is, I think, an eight foot four standing height before you get to the couple of purlins and things he's going to build as his frame on this thing. So is he taking the, the high part of the shed at the eave or is he going up to the ridge of the of the gable next to it? I mean, where, where is he starting if it's not he, shown on the drawing? This is only, on, like I say, 18 by 16. Only that little corner is going to have this new cover. This is a, that is his dining room window. It gets an awful lot of sun in the house. That's why he did that sunsetter shade, which isn't working. 
Um, this looks like a very reasonable replacement for that shade. The construction in my mind looks like it's probably a little above what needs to be done, but he apparently is a metalworking guy. Again, uh, the, the drainage will not be to the front, it will be to the right of this picture. And um, yeah, you know, my labor is free. My wife's advice is priceless. I like that. The bottom line is you're, you're, you would have to approve that if you're gonna approve this or the committee, if we decide to, then you're approving it as a variant because we don't allow multiple roof types on the same structure. So you're, you're basically putting a metal roof right up to the architectural shingle, right? Sort of, yeah. Yeah, wait a minute, Stephanie. We we have a, allowed in certain circumstances, and and like you said, it's it's uh, essentially becomes a, a variance. But you have to have a pretty good reason for a variance, and uh, and uh, I I don't know if the whole solution is to provide shade. I mean, you could put an awning over the window too. Uh, and well, uh, well, again, Dan, I mean, they, it's exposed to all all the people on the lake. I'm sorry, but again, Dan, he he has an awning in place. It catches the wind, and it is not, it is not a working solution. Well, I was talking about a window awning, not 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 a, a an old overhead screen awning. Well, you, you, you put around the window. Uh, he he's got a door coming out of the house in that back left corner. Uh, this is about the only way to keep that door functioning without going up and tearing into the existing roof, turning this into a multi-thousand dollar job. Again, this is not visible. You can approve it. You just have to prove it with variance. If, if you feel like it's reasonable, if, it, if, the, if the metal is gonna be painted dark to match the roof as best it can and like you said, it's not visible from the roof. It's not harming the neighborhood. It's not changing the value of the properties in, you know, in its close proximity, then, then there's a reason to prove it. You can improve it. You just have to prove it with a very I don't quite yeah. understand how it's going to drain. Uh, if you say it's turning uh, 90 degrees to the right, uh, that means he's going to be going uh, against the slope of the existing roof. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that how that works. Uh, have you been able to visualize that? Is, is there any reason why you can't resubmit the drawing? Be changing it. Um, well, if you if you look at it, if you look at it, it, it basically it's gonna it, it, the gable sticks out on the other side, so it's basically <laughs> turning and it'll be under the other gable. Just it, it's it would be the same either way he does it. It's gonna be it's the corner of the house. It's a corner. It's an inside corner, and he's just gonna change the, the direction of the flow. It, it would. It's the same picture here, except for it turns, and, and it, but it would have the same drawing how it comes off that roof. And, and let me show you this show picture this. again. This will this might yeah. help again a little bit. You can see how it's the corner. You said it's like right here at the corner. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just and going the you, other. Just going the other direction there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stephanie, you were zooming that. in. That that piece to the outside to the left is essentially a staircase. If, if it drains directly toward the lake, all of the water dumps onto that staircase. That's been problematic for a couple of reasons, slipping and sliding among others. By coming off to the bottom of the, of the picture, to the south, if you will, that's going to drain off onto bare ground. It is, it's not actually tied into the roof. It is below the soffit pokes back underneath that soffit, 18 inches or whatever that soffit is. He'll actually remove a little section of guttering to accommodate this. It will be snug up against the small gabled roof going toward the lake and drop something like five or six inches to the edge of that deck. Again, that's a very, very low slope. I don't, know if I don't know if you guys can see that, but I mean, it's, it's 30 plus feet from center of that roof line to the water's edge. I mean, it's, 
it's going from 676 feet down to 644 feet. But you don't feet. anticipate him removing the, uh, oh, he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't uh, he's not going to remove the uh, the gutter uh, on the existing house, uh, I, I assume, where he was going to attach. In other words, the, the drainage coming off the, uh, the slope of the house uh, would be picked up by the existing uh, gutter uh, where it's over the window. Essentially, no. Um, his, his, his intention is to remove the gutter on both of those two sloped roof sections so that it will drain directly onto this flat uh, flat roof section and go off to the south. Uh, if, if, he le if he leaves those gutters in place, he loses another th two or three inches just of gutter space and there's no real way to get to them again and clean them, access them. Removing those and you know painting the uh, the uh, fascia that's under them and bringing some of that back up as part of this construction makes, in my mind, makes sense. If he had to leave them, he could. These these gutters don't actually have downspouts on them anyway. They are sort of extended out a foot and a half from the, from the structure and dump a stream of water 20 foot down to the dirt. Well, you know, it's not for us to tell somebody how to build their house, but uh, what, what he's creating is a situation where that tin roof is gonna take an awful lot of drainage in a storm. Uh, it's going to be coming down off that roof and onto that tin roof on two sides. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's going to be picking up and, and, and channeling water out onto his, his property right over that tin roof. So um, I hope he uh, understands that and uh, builds it accordingly. But uh, I mean, he did understand it. And the main roof that drains into that gutter dumps directly off the end of the roof on the south. That, that's okay. Exactly that's the same spot. To do. That's okay. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to keep it off the roof and get it off the roof. And that's why you put the gutter up there. Uh, but what he's doing is he's collecting it onto a tin roof that he's putting up there. I, I, you know, I, if somebody is throwing it out and he's okay with it. Um, but, I don't see a real problem with it, especially with that slow slope. It's going to build up a lot of leaves and branches and all that sort of stuff uh, hanging on there. Um, it, it's, it's just, I, I don't know, potential headache, but it, that's really not for us to uh, to get too deep involved with. It's just that uh, uh, hopefully he knows that <clears throat> and has taken it into consideration. But... Uh, uh, <clears throat> All he's doing is covering a deck, right, Dwayne? That, that's all that is. It's a, aside from that sunset or shade that is essentially the identical size, it's, yeah, it's what it is, yeah. My question to you is if they, um, what would be the uh, <clears throat> bottom, the height from the deck to uh, the roof line? Because if they ever decide to enclose that, uh, if that's over seven foot six, that's fine. But uh, you'll never be able to enclose it. And yes, it is, say, like an Arkansas room or anything like that, if it's below seven foot six. Ron, I guess my response is that it's not what he's requesting now, so it's not really part of our consideration. I understand. I was just thinking in the future. Yeah, I know. He's the way he's talking about this being three inch metal tube, it's it doesn't it's not really setting up to be a rebuild anyway. It's solid. Uh it will be, but he's sitting on a wood deck. <laughs> yeah. So I mean there's a there's a he's overbuilding this shade canopy cover for what is already a you know, it, the, the deck's in good shape. He's maintained it, but it's not new. No, 
Okay. What's what's the uh, size of it? Uh, what is it like? I think sixteen by eighteen. It may be a tad smaller than that if you actually work from the uh, fascia frontages. And parameter-wise, it will not extend past the house or the, or the staircase, right? No. It, it essentially, you it's know. buried in the corner. You can see what he's got on this drawing where he appears to show a foot and a half or something to the edge. I actually expect he may extend that just a little bit, depending on what the what the cut sheets arrive as. Um, but yeah, it, it seems reasonable to me. And uh, yeah, it, it, it will look better than the existing sunset or shade. Are you recommending approval, Dwayne? I would. If it needs a variance, that was, I, I recognize this had some problems. Uh, open to any suggestions. If a variance is the way we do it, we may want to do that. But I, I didn't think it was that much of a push otherwise to get rid of a problem. The one that we did approve was done on a variance that I can remember. Uh, or I did uh, one or two of them on DeSoto. And uh, uh, because some houses were adjacent to it, somebody wanted to put up the same thing as the adjacent house, which really didn't fit into the plans. Um, so uh, we gave it a variance. I mean, it's already there, and it's set back far enough where you can hardly see it. Yeah. It probably fits into the, a, a, the similar concept uh, where it's um, highly unvisible. Um, so yeah. uh, I have a tendency to give them a variance to do this. Does anybody have objection? I do not. Uh, okay, now you said that, uh, you know, he's, he's going to try and match colors and all that sort of stuff, right? He did, and it says that right on here. Okay. Well, no, it doesn't, but it says it somewhere on the permit. That hatch mark on the bottom is that some kind of a, a railing of some sort? I, no, I think that's supposed to be his deck. Oh, okay. On right. great. Sixes. On great. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, again, this is about twenty feet in the air right here. Oh, <laughs> that's up there. Oh, yeah. that's the second floor. <laughs> yeah. That, well, it, it's it's one of those. I, don't recall if there's a basement under this or not, but uh, no, this it's it's street level front, and it's that kind of a sloping lot. That uh, yeah, again, it Stephanie had the topo map. It drops thirty or forty feet from the street down to the lake. And this is about halfway to the lake. Well, did you get a feel that, uh, I, I mean, uh, th this is a structural consideration now. <laughs> uh, I thought you were sitting on a grade. No, this is already on, the, the existing deck is up on piers, four by six posts. Okay. Oh, three inch tubing. Oh, okay, you're just extending it. Okay. And I'm sorry, his new construction that he wants to do with three inch metal tube. Yeah. He's okay. a metal guy. The underneath frame is already there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, uh, in good shape, just not, you know, brand new. Yeah. Okay. Well, just, any, any denials? No. Stephanie? Yes. May I ask that we re entertain opening up the permit that was denied to me over off of Balboa? It was the exact same considerations. They didn't have a problem. No site view, cross the lake. I, I mean, it's the exact same arguments that Dwayne just said, and I was flat out denied on mine. So can we please have that one brought back up if the lady is still interested and have a variance issued on that if, one, possibly? If, if, if you'll get with me after the meeting, we'll pull that permit and people look at it, okay? Have it recommitted if you want. Yeah, just get with me after the meeting and we'll pull it and re reconnect with that property owner and take a look at it, okay, Janet? All right, thank you. Yeah, that was, I think that was two or three meetings ago. 
No, that was uh, probably about eight months ago. Okay, I remember it. <clears throat> uh, what's the next one? 39 Alpeza. Janet? That's fine. Um, he is replacing a grass area with rock, but he's got, and he's also putting additional mulch beds in, in addition to the ones that he already has. He's got quite a bit of extensive landscaping. He's just taking the grass out and replacing it with the rock. I would move to approve. It's all in the front, right? Excuse me, Dan, I didn't hear you. Is it all in the front? Yes. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Any objections? Okay. Next. 39 Zarpa. It's a fun name. I uh, took that because it got assigned to me. I got all the stuff sent to me on the agenda as Ken having it. Um, Nick Daly, boat dock, his standard uh, drawing. He's 20 foot in from the side property line, and I would move to approve. Can you just take a peek at it? I'm getting there. Give me just a sec. Yeah, sorry about that, Janet. I <clears throat> think I just put gave you both 39s. <laughs> Forgot the street name changed. That's the location at the at the edge and this is the drawing. Oh yeah. That's good. <laughs> it will not be interfering with any access for any of the other neighboring docks. That's good. Any 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 Denials? Any problem? Okay, next one. That would be me. 50 color. Uh, it's not a deck. Um, what it is is uh, there's a uh, extension of the house to the north. I think I've got some sent some pictures. Uh, there's a flat roof on the uh, Arkansas room. And the house keeps getting penetrated with uh, tree limbs when they fall. And um, those are insignificant stuff. Those don't mean squat. Uh, whoever drew them would do. Yeah. <laughs> well, the flat roof has got a, uh, uh, it's not flat, it's got a, a slight slope. But what they want to do is they want to extend, see where the roof line is right there, the existing roof line. They're bringing that straight on out. They're going to cut out that uh, uh, slope roof, make that flat. They're going to uh, extend that on out. And then what they're going to do is uh, frame on up on that uh, Arkansas room to where it holds all the framing for the uh, roof members. And the window, perfect, Stephanie, thank you. The windows there are gonna come out front. That lower roof line will go completely out and it will follow the uh, uh, slope of the roof on the Arkansas room. <laughs> My only question I never did ask him was if there's gonna be any electrical involved with it. Um, typically on an addition, something like that, somebody's going to want a ceiling fan and that kind of stuff. And I failed to ask if there was going to be any electrical for the permit. They're going to put in new headers there at the uh, four windows there that you see at the lower area. They're going to, uh, put, uh, double, uh, two by six, uh, header in there. Again, frame that on up. And basically use, uh, typically those members between the windows are structural. They're just going to basically use those as uh, ornamental since the rest of the house is that way. 
So, and they're going to extend the uh, roof line uh, roughly uh, one foot four inches to where there is an overhang both front and uh, sideways on each side. So the ridge is coming all the way out. Yes, that's coming straight out. They're using the same materials as what is there, trying to match as best as possible. And then these walls on the side, yes, go those go straight on up. Are you saying this? Uh, uh, but they're going to have to. They're going to have to do some reframing. Okay. Yes, they're going to have to make sure it is uh, shored up properly. Did the I'm picture not. change? Beg your pardon. Did the picture change? Yeah, it did. It's got a doorway there. Yeah, this looks pretty simple, actually. Well, it's not. Yeah, I would say, yeah, go ahead and we approve it. It's not an easy project, but it's simple. Yeah, it, uh, and it gets rid of a metal roof. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> OK. Um, it'll do the house. It'll, it, the, the family, it's a rental, and they want to make it to where they don't have anything falling into that flat roof again because there's a lot of trees in the backyard. Yeah. Okay, and I, I assume it's, it, it's either on there or was mentioned that it, it, they'll be painting to match or yes, whatever. Exactly. Okay. Just when you look at the garden construction you got there, it scares you. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that's not in compliance. <laughs> no. Um, uh, any denials? Uh, okay, let's move forward. That was, uh, which one was that? 50 kilometer? Yeah. Oh, I'm next. Okay. Uh, 54 El Cano. This is a landscape job. Uh, and we have a calculation sheet. And uh, according to uh, the count that I came up with, he's, he's saving 20, 24 trees or attempting to save 24 trees and he will need 31 in the end, but that's for a, a, a problem at a, at a later date. Uh, the house is, is built and uh, some of the bare rock is already in place. Uh, it's up for sale. And it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a nice looking job, actually. Uh, the, uh, I don't know if you see the coloring. Does everybody see the coloring? Uh, where he shows the gravel is pretty much what he has out there. Uh, and the beds are pretty much, the, which one is it? The one stuck <laughs> Now, in the back, uh, the landscaping, what, what, what saves in there is most of it is natural back there. Uh, there's very little gravel um, on, on the back uh, third of the property. So that natural counts basically as mulch area. Uh, he's got plenty of trees back there. And um, grass, uh, he, he doesn't have any grass area. But uh, he does have uh, some beds. Uh, I don't know if it shows on your plan and color. I know I colored mine up. But he's got beds uh, in the front, uh, along the sidewalk, uh, right in front of the house, and in the back next to the patio. Right. Those pink, uh, pinkish, purplish area, those are, 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 are beds for flowers. And uh, he's putting in, let me see. He doesn't show the plants. I thought he had 12 plants in. He's submitting this to the And um, 
I, 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 I think what we've been doing uh, to some people in the past is we, we mentioned to them that they have to have certain uh, foundation plants in every five foot in the, in the beds. He doesn't have them, uh, but the beds are all prepared and, uh, and ready to be planting. Uh, he might be saving them for the, for the owner to pick the plants. I'm not sure. Which, which isn't a bad idea, but the point is, uh, it should be known to him what has to go in there uh, as a minimum, and it has to be an agreement either between, you know, him and the owner or whatever. But aren't we giving them like six months to do that? Yes. Or that that was another change just in the most recent iteration of the of the PC review, and that was allow spec homes to not put the onus of landscaping on the contractor to allow about to allow six months not about six months for them to sell the house and and let the new owner determine what their landscaping plan would look like so yeah the fact that they're preparing for those beds is important because when the actual plan comes in from the owner will that'll be the requirement yeah they're, they're all well prepared there as a matter of fact all you have to do is clear away a little bit of mulch and just put the plant in there so it's in a, it's in pretty good shape uh, and uh, I, I did take photos of it, so I do have photos. But uh, uh, those planting beds are there, right in the whole walkway, between the walkway and the house, and also a big triangular piece uh, near the street. That's all in place. And there's a, there's, a, there's a bed in the back, too. They may have to increase the bed in the back because uh, this is on a golf course. Uh, normally, we, we call for uh, plants every five foot on the back when you're on a golf course. Uh, unless, like I said, they have six months. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So how, how, do we, how do we state that? I mean, do we, do we put that in the uh, stipulation or? Yes. Or? We'll just note that this is kind of their preliminary plan, but the, the, final, the final plan is, is due within six months. Of the service okay. being issued, the final inspection being issued. Well, then, then I, uh, everything else looks like it's it's satisfactory, uh, and I think we ought to uh, approve it based upon that uh, that notation. Now, we we put that notation in the stipulation column. That's what I did. Just final landscape due within six months. Okay. Good. That one fits in okay. Next one. And I think you took this. Yes, yeah, so I took this. Uh, on the last meeting we had, uh, the owner and the contractor requested a preliminary indication as to whether or not this would be approved. And uh, if you bring it up, uh, maybe we'll recall it. Uh, we have an existing swim dock. Uh, well, it's a swim dock, boat dock. Uh, okay. The owner wants a extended dock 10 feet, or in actual fact, we had a surveyor, Alan Beck came out and did, uh, located the pins. He actually has nine and a half feet to his property line. So he will be extending it nine and a half feet to the property line. Uh, and what he has next to it, and the variance will be giving him the justification to do it, uh, to, to, to build within the 20 foot uh, extension, is the fact that he has better than 40 foot of common property on that side. Um, this drawing actually shows the, the dock in the wrong place. It's on the, it's on the right side. <laughs> Uh, he's got it on the left side. It's on the right side. But the bottom line is this. Uh, there's a 40-foot uh, common property seawall uh, uh, next, next to him, which means the justification we use for allowing this is that there's 20 foot of common property from his property line and 20 foot of common property from the adjacent owner on the other side of the common property his line. So that means it's 40 feet away. And uh, based upon that justification, uh, we're allowing him to, to build uh, to his property line. Um, 
we, we went over this with uh, with Jack, and it was it was at Jack's uh, suggestion, and we all uh, discussed it, and now it's coming up for approval. But as you can see, the doc, that's it. You got it right there. Yeah. And what he wants to do is is fill it in to the common property or the the edge of his property. Um, what what will be a nine and a half foot extension and to the same length out into the lake as his existing one. And um, uh, we, we don't see any, any reason not to approve it. You just need to do it with a variance, which with is fine. With a variance, absolutely. I, I agree with you, yeah. Oh, okay. I like it. I'd like to have that common property next to it and build out. <laughs> that is nice. Yeah, it is. This one's me. I uh, asked for uh, Dan's assistance on this one. This is uh, on Guadalajara. Excuse me, not Guadalajara. Pigo Way, 60 South Pigo Way. Um, the parking area in front where they have off of their uh, driveway is crumbling. What it is, is it's basically two foot six. Show, have you got the pictures, Stephanie? Yeah, yeah, I do. That would be uh, beneficial. Okay, let me just say. What it is, is it's got uh, stone on the, you see where my truck's parked right there? To the back side of that stone is roughly nine foot four. At that nine foot four area, that is where the drainage is. You, off to the left of that is, there is a uh, 12 inch or a 10 inch uh, concrete culvert underneath the drive. Well, right, yeah, right there. Now all that stone is falling apart. The water is pretty much taken over the years, is taken over moving the rocks and stuff. What they want to do is at basically nine foot four, they want to bring in and put a footing in, uh, put uh, concrete masonry units uh, reinforced with rebar up, and then put flagstone on top of that as well as put flagstone on the back side of that, uh, those CMU, uh, CMUs. They also want to uh, dredge where the water, if you look right there on the bottom side of the picture and you go up to the front side, that's where the water drains. So they're gonna have to put some type in there. Now, with this being said, I asked Dan because I didn't know the stipulations or rules of the parking. I have no idea where um, easement is on this property because I don't have, uh, doesn't really show on that one page. Um, so Dan called um Jason, Jason Jason Temple we have not heard back from him on whether it would be a go with do something along this line uh and then the property owner wants to know if it's his responsibility I already know it's his responsibility since it's some property up to there and it's his property for maintenance oh. Basically, Stephanie, what we're talking about is uh, where the truck is parked. That's basically right away property. Uh, from the actual pavement to that rock wall is only is less than ten feet. So that whole construction there is inside the right of way, probably. Uh, if, if if the right of way for South Pago is like the, most of the other village. Uh, it's in the right of way. Uh, now, what we've been telling owners in the past is they can put, they can do certain construction in those right of ways, but they're responsible for maintaining it. 
Uh, but also, uh, Jason needs to look at it to see if it's going to interfere with his operation, his maintenance operation, his people and his equipment, et cetera, and so forth. So, um, uh, if he's going to be able to be allowed to build that, uh, we need at least Jason to, to give up an okay on it. Did I you find the pins? Were you able to locate the pins? I didn't look for the pins, to be honest with you. It, it, that wall is so crumbled and everything else, I don't know if there's a possibility of finding the pins. I could look. Well, in looking at the, when I look at GIS and I look at the property, I mean, it, it appears that that's kind of right there at the property line. So the road right away is like you said, where your truck is parked, but the wall itself is kind of right on the property line. So it's, it's in that 20, it's a 25 foot setback, but that's not construction. That's really, that's drainage work, right? And so, construction they want to put a retaining wall there yeah I, I i meant it's not it's not a building you know i mean it's right exactly oh. necessary yeah. obviously you can see it you can see it it's necessary to keep keep shore up that that slope um i don't think i don't even think i think that i don't even think that affects the cooper easement there i think that'd be okay with them even I agree that Jason probably should look at utilities right there and just see what we have going on. If there's anything running right, you know, right there that they could potentially get in the middle of while they're in the middle of their project. <clears throat> but I know the water, the water has been located, but I don't know above any above that any other utilities that would be in there. That I'm sure they didn't call Julie or call anybody to uh, inspect it. Well, the, the water runs perpendicular to, to this, so, so it just comes on the property. It's, it, the water isn't running uh, right parallel to the rock wall. It just runs. It just, it just accesses onto the property, so the water is, is somewhere way outside the wall. So it won't be a problem with water. I don't know what else might be underneath there, but it's, it won't be a problem with water. Um, Down through here, there's a 10-inch culvert, and so right. it runs there. It'd be nice if the swale cut in there. Yeah, that, that's up to the contractor to do. Right, but uh, uh, well, no, I think it's also part of uh, if you're going to do this, you're going to cut in the swale to make it right. I mean, correct. I mean, and then if Jason has some recommendations, maybe that would be you know I can I can test those if I've talked to him or if we meet out there or something. So <clears throat> this is the lot that we're talking about. And, and mind you, these lot lines can be off just a little bit on this. So, and, and here's that wall. Mm -hmm. Likely it's on his property line. You know, likely that wall is on his property line. Pretty yeah. darn close. Doesn't Stephanie? Me, yeah. Could you, could this not fall into the same thing we've said, like the sideline variances and all that, if it ever has to, if they, if the, yeah. We ever have to get in there? Utility, it's 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 a utility easement too, just like the sideline is. Why couldn't that's exactly not right. Do the do the letter with that and and let let them go. Yeah, that's that's exactly actually right. actually so that, doing it. Yeah, doing this would actually give us an opportunity to give him that letter in case they ever have to get into it later, because it's we still ha may have that problem down the road with the wall that's there now. Yeah, that's so, exactly right. right. Exactly. The disclaimer that they that they signed off on when they applied for the permit, they. <laughs> gave them notice that they would be building in an easement and should anything need to be happening later, then it would be, it would potentially be at their cost. That's my thing. My other thought though is still that he's asking to do some flagstone top in between the road and this wall. That is truly, purely right of way that I don't think we can grant. That is true. So we do not. Yeah, oh, that's true. We would not allow them to put flagstone in the road right away. They could put gravel, you know, like we do. You see it everywhere. I mean, there's gravel, yeah. whatever, everywhere. But to it be an eight inch yeah. flagstone sitting on top of the concrete masonry units that he's using for his retaining wall. They're thinking you want it between the road and no, no, they're, they're going to fill it's in. A cap, it's a cap. I misunderstood. Yeah. Thank you. Concrete masonry okay. unit. That's different. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what they're going to do is they're going to infill it, whatever taken out, they'll resupply the gravel for parking in that area. 
And that's why I had a question about it. That's why I took Dan out there. I see no problem with it as long as Jason and everybody is uh, up. And like you said, you know, the, uh, the letter, as Tucker was saying, send a letter with them stating that this could possibly be dug out at some time in the near future or later future. Stephanie, this definitely needs uh, Jason's blessing. Uh, I'll give you another reason why. Go back to that cross section of the wall. Uh, I mean, this is a tough one. The, the drainage is actually toward the house. Is this? <laughs> It goes to the side of the house, yeah. It goes to the side of the house, but definitely toward, yeah. yeah Is that what you want to see? No, the cross section, uh, the photo, the photo. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, thought you meant. Yeah. Now, you see where that red flag or whatever that is? That's basically where they, Underneath that, right where your arrow is now, is where the, the drainage, the under uh, uh, culvert. Co the culvert is coming out. Generally speaking, and I again, this is, this is a very old, uh, pro this was probably built back in the early 70s. Uh, generally speaking, your culvert is not on your property. Your culvert is in the right of way. And this wall is actually on the roadside of the culvert. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very suspicious that the property line is, is actually three or three, two or three feet, maybe four feet to the right of that wall. So I think that wall is really on in the right of way. And, 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 and uh, if we're going to uh, replace that with a retaining wall, the construction that we require in, in the PCs for the retaining wall uh, is such that they're going to be doing all this work in the right of way. And I, and I think Jason may, may want to give his blessing as to whether or not uh, he's going to permit that. Now, he may permit it, but maybe he may want to see a little more detail on the drawings and he may want to locate the, uh, the, pro the actual property lines before anything is started. But I don't think we have a problem with him doing the work. The only doing this work, I just think it needs our blessing. Uh, in, in the form of Jason. Can't you approve it with the uh, with the variance or the uh, stipulation about the deal and, and then upon but through the ACC and then it re, but it does require Jason's approval. Absolutely. He needs, yeah, he, we can approve it. He, he can concur. Well, there you go. But the permission should not be uh, uh, given until until we have all of that. I think we would also want the retaining wall to be clearly on his property and not across the line on common property right of way. Well, that's, that could change it. That could be an well, issue. Yeah. Well, and that, and that, that's right. And that is because they're going to have to put in 70 feet of uh, culvert through there and then have it drain somewhere. Right. Uh, underneath. Well, I mean, if, the, if he's going to put in a retaining wall, yeah, you could, you could cut off and you can, but you can't go more than the 45 or else things are gone. You can yeah. off, now you're going to have to cut a swale inside your property. It can let's, be done. let's do this. So the, so the committee doesn't have a problem necessarily with a retaining wall. They just want to verify the location. So I'll take that, take it with, and, and get together with uh, Jason and make sure that we have him properly located and that he's comfortable in the right of way and all of that stuff. But the committee right now for you guys just approve the concept, the, the fact that they want to put a retaining wall right there and we'll let Jason determine the exact location. How's that? That looks good, but they also need to come up with a structural drawing on how they're going, okay. to, how they're going to do it. This is how they're going to do it. Well, this right here. So they need to actually provide the, right. the detail behind the, the yes. wall construction. Okay. Yes. It, yeah, and uh, it's very it's very vague on how they're going about doing it. They just need detailed drawing. Okay. I vote yeah. we approve. Uh, yeah. Now let's let's keep one thing in mind also, and I I don't. I'll bring this up only if anybody has an objection. 
we're, we're, we're saying okay, basically because there's a, re, a de facto retaining wall already there. If they wanted to just do this, it probably would have a problem with it. But because, he, because he's really maintaining an existing retaining wall that's already there, he, he's got de facto pre, uh, approval for having that retaining wall. Yeah, but the same token, if you're taking it out and putting new in, you have to go according to the standards. That's why the Jason needs to go. Right, but that wall may not even be allowed now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Are, we, are we, we're all understanding that? Yep. Yep. Okay. So tell me what we're doing. Have we just voted to approve it? And then we're going to make a comment. I'm not sure what the comment is. Okay, so we're, approving, we're approving with the uh, addition of the, of the construction drawings behind the, you know, for the wall and Jason Temple's sign off on location. Yes. And I, I, I think we need one more thing in the stipulation that the construction wall shall be done in accordance with table number. 7-1, which but is that's a seawall though. That's okay. Yeah, I know, but it's okay. That's that's what it says. It retaining walls, it, it refers you to sea walls, and that's the seawall cross section. <clears throat> now, if they don't do it like, like that, then they have to submit something for approval. Right. Does, doesn't that make sense? Well, if we get it submitted in a timely fashion, could we go ahead and approve by email? Don't hold the project up. Yeah, we can approve by email on it on anything if we can, if if we can handle that. Yeah, why not? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move to just a uh, approved. <laughs> what we're saying here, Stephanie, is uh, if somebody's going to build something, and we're gonna allow them to build something like this on on or very close to right away property which may have utilities on it we, we want to be sure that they have a proper drawing and a proper design and and, and things like that. not just let, let them go hog wild like they're building something on their own property this is public property that we're very close to and the construction has to be accordingly i gotcha we'll, we'll reach back out to them and get the right drawings yeah. Okay. Stephanie, do you know that reference nine seven something? Uh, nine, 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 seven, nine, seven, nine, nine. Nine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll follow that one up with email. Last guy. Uh, 94 Marillo Way. This is actually another culvert into the drainage ditch. Um, again, this has a 10 foot plastic uh, flexible culvert under the driveway, which is vaguely shown at the bottom light lines on the drawing. Uh, the neighbor to the left actually has already done this sort of project and in fact has tied into the, the culvert on the, on the left hand side of this property's driveway. So this is actually just extending that culvert area 62 feet down his property. This right now exists as about a two foot deep ditch. Uh, there it is. And you can, you can see the shadow. The ditch is pretty prominent. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they're going to drop in about three 20-foot lengths of that plastic black vinyl culvert uh, and then backfill it with, they're talking about some fairly fancy fill, but essentially it's just fill. And then they have replaced, or that may be a grass front yard already, Either way, they're going to extend the grass over this fill. Look, 
perfectly good. It fits the neighbors. I recommend that we approve it. I, I think we have a requirement for 15 inch minimum. Do you know if they'll be able to put 15 inches in there? Dan, it makes no sense. If what we're, if he's got a 10 inch that he's tying into, uh, it, trying to change the size of a culvert halfway along the culvert makes no sense. So, so it is, uh, under the uh, driveway is not 15 inches. No, it, it is. It is exactly what this size is. That's what he matched. So he's matching the existing culvert size. He is matching the existing culvert size, so it actually can clamp in and be, you know, a sealed connection, at least as much as culverts are sealed. And presumably, this the adjoining lot. Uh, 0017, 02, 106 has done this work already. So essentially from yeah. one edge to this other edge is Retained something on the order of 120, 140 foot that's already passing through culvert. Uh, and again, this is, this is a deep kind of tough ditch on a curve. It, this is distinctly an improvement. You, you know, um, I, I, I don't see a problem with that as, as an improvement, no question about that. But uh, if you have a 10 inch pipe and, and you've got a, 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 a graded ditch outside, what happens when you get a lot of rain? is it, uh, it can only go so much through that pipe. And what it does, the ditch holds the rest, builds it up and holds it as a retaining pond until it seeps down through the, uh, through the culvert. If you extend that culvert all the way up, then what you're forcing the thing to do is back all the way up to the original source of where the end of the pipe you're putting in, and you're gonna create a, a big pond behind that. You Thank you. If you've already got a hundred and some odd feet of, of this culvert in place, making it slightly larger and having that junction someplace underground, I, I personally don't like. Um, I, I think you're creating more problems than you are gonna help. The flow, by the way, is to the left on this drawing. So this is another one really where the work is being done in the road right away. So, I mean, I, the committee can approve it to a point and I think we need Jason to just go ahead and bless the fact that they're doing it because it is in the road right away and it is the culvert. They yeah, all I can say is if Jason says, okay, it's okay. I mean, yeah. from I would, point of view, it's a no brainer. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't belabor it too much. It's we'll, we'll get him, we'll get him to sign off on it. This is strictly storm control I'm talking about now. Yeah. Nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, so just, just, just uh, mention it that uh, Jason can give final approval. Be okay it. Is Nikki Sherman still on with us? Yes. Hi, Nikki. Boy, you've been awfully quiet. <laughs> uh, well, do we have any others? That is it on my list. The only, <clears throat> the only thing left, um, so Renaissance Homes submitted three of the plans that they intend to build in that CAA project. And again, this is part of that Builders Guild program. So all they're really asking is for the committee to go ahead and approve the plan, not the site, not the location, not you know how it sits on the lot. It'll still come back as, an, as a permit, but you'll have done the approval of the house itself. You know, the, you'll have said, yes, we like the construction, the style, the tech, you know, whatever, the, the materials being used. And all they'll come back with later is the site plan because again they've already paid for they've already paid all of the permit fees 
for all of the properties in there. What are we approving? You would only be approving the des the design, the, the oh, house really? plans themselves. Well, I haven't seen them. They're yeah, in there. They're actually, those are those oddball pictures that came separately. Oh, that's, that's not a plan. No, they're just yeah, house they, plans. They actually are. They, they are. It is. Yeah, it is. I'll, I'll put them up on the screen for you right quick. So one or two elevations in water colors. No, there's there's all the plans behind them. Oh, I, I haven't seen any of this. Okay. Yeah, they I, were let in me, there. So that we don't take up a lot more time. I mean, I'll, here, let me just share the screen real quick. But, um, hold on. So they're your typical plans that like Renaissance would put forth or carriage or anybody else. And there's three different elevations. And all they're saying is that committee, you know, we want you to see that these are the, the plans that are going to be submitted. Hold on just a second. Um, well, why don't we vote on that email well, the, the, today? What, what's the wall construction? Looks like brick. It's, <laughs> it's brick. It, 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 <laughs> it doesn't say. Yeah. Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie, yeah. Do you, do you know why? Do you know any reason why he would want to do this? I don't. I don't see a problem with it, but I don't know why he would even bother with it. You know, I I, I think there was in a in a effort to expedite the permitting process later. Okay. So, All right. Well, so that really makes sense. The, yeah. So the, really, the only thing that the committee would be approving later is the site plan. Well, Yes, yes, I plan. Yeah. Okay. Cross section again. The section yeah. through the wall. Yeah, and this is uh again, this is just one. I can go ahead and ask him to submit all the. I don't think he has submitted the colors and the brick color and the roof color and all that. So we can get the the list of that for you. But well, it didn't happen last time either. Yeah, but I I actually think it's more appropriate to wait for the color stuff until he has these sort of cited. So w the only thing we care about is that they're not three identical next to each other. Yeah. Yeah, and that would that wouldn't be in his best interest either. I mean he's gonna right. do what he thinks he can sell. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He's not gonna do that. But yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Dwayne. Um really and, all, and, all you guys want to know. And I mean it's your typical it's it's more typical Renaissance Renaissance construction. I mean you kind of know what materials he uses, but we can get a list of the and and the brick may be a slightly different color on different houses depending on who he's building for, if it's a pre-sell or if it's a spec, you know, but he's got plans. Fine. He's got plans that he's identified for that specific neighborhood and he's gonna try to build variations with slightly different elevations. Yeah one of those so anyway these are just three and there's not there's really not much for you to do at this point other than what you probably need is the material they're all brick you know they have an architectural shingle they're going to be earth tones and you know neutral your your normal stuff that you're looking at sounds like the whole neighborhood is going to be nothing but brick and maybe a little bit of ephus and stone. pretty much yeah pretty much and and probably <laughs> I think there's going to be a little bit of hardy, um, probably not so much vinyl in there, but hardy and brick. Hardy board. Oh, hardy hard. board. Yep. yep. That's that's kind of that that's cement hard. board that came yeah. up earlier. Yep. Yeah. 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 He makes a nice house. So uh, uh, do we have to approve this now? Uh, no. No. I'll get you the a material list first, and then you can put it after that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm I'm going to leave it out of these minutes then. Okay, that's fine. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Um, Stephanie, your report. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dan, that's for you to ask. I, you know, I, I really don't have anything other than what we've all already talked about. As everybody knows, the board and, and Tucker's not sitting here right now, but they're um, deliberating. There he's here, there he's back. The board <laughs> deliberating the the protective covenants and what what iteration and version we use going forward. So that's still in discussion, and we'll know more later after they finish talking it through. And um, that's really that's all I have. 
we're still working mostly from home at the office, um, in and out of the building a bit, but mostly from home. And that's it. That's it for me. You're not going to tell us about the fact that your your husband made the center fall to Arkansas oh. Golf Museum. <laughs> yeah, we did get a nice ride up. The village got a nice ride up uh, for our 50th anniversary in Arkansas Golf Magazine. So that was good. Yep, hey. marketing is alive and well. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Lovely eight. John, report. I have nothing at this time. Still a lot going on. <laughs> Tucker, can we ask a question? Well, sure you can. I mean, I I sort of listened into the whatever discussion session yesterday. Do you have any idea where covenants are going? Is there anything you want from us or want us not to do or direction would be handy? Well, the direction that, that it appears to be going at this time is, 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 and again, I'm, when I speak, I try to make it clear. I'm speaking as one of seven. Uh, but the direction at this time seems to be that, that the protective covenants will be, brought back to where they were in maybe 14. And uh, my, my personal goal would is, is for the ACC, including me, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go into the new, the, the, the protective covenants that we have today and weed through that and get things that we need in the protective covenants that we had in 14 that we need, you know, we need added to that. Uh, it's, the consensus is, and, and, and mine also, that uh, uh, it's really hard for anybody to understand what you can and can't build here right now. Uh, it, because it does, unfortunately, I call, the, I call it almost like the code book. It's according to who's reading it, what you can do and what you can't do. And it just mm -hmm. needs to be clear. And uh, I think most people feel that way. So that's, that's where I think it's going, but we'll see. Do you think you'll be asking us to give you advice or will it come from y'all to us as a document? I, I just don't know if no, no, I'm sorry. we want I, us to do anything. Totally, totally from you guys, or I say you guys and us or me, you know, it'll, no. I don't think the board's going to be reading that book uh, and you. trying to determine what we need to add. It's going to be totally up to us. Uh, and then a board, you know, a board approval from there. I mean, that would be my, obviously, but that would be my direction. And I think I was clear about that yesterday. I don't know. But. I don't know who else saw that, but yeah, it, it, it evolved into a kind of an interesting discussion. Um, Leslie had the comments about, you know, not getting rid of everything until we had something to back it up, which made some sense. I just didn't know what the timing would be. Yeah, well, and, and my, and, I mean, I was accused of not caring, and I, it was more of a joke, I think, than anything, but uh, I, it was, we will have something in place. We will, we will, we will have the, the covenants as they were, um, I won't say 14, I think the 14 was a date on the covenants. The covenants were, they were in effect, I think, when, when these new covenants came in, will actually go back into effect. And then uh, how quick that is changed is, would be uh, entirely up to the ACC committee yeah. uh, to, to bring changes to the board. But it, I, I truly believe it's easier to take, uh, add to what we have than try to, try to we, spend, it'd take, it'd take a year or two, I believe, to weed through and take things out. Yeah. So. We, we found that out when we gave you that other stuff in April. Uh, There's actually a, a, another PC document 521-2014, but... Uh, That's the one I'm referring to. No, actually the, the 418-18, sorry. 418-18 is okay. actually the one that I happen to like. It has the actual citation of the recording information and it, it, it looked like a starting point too. Well, now which one is that? It's 418? 418, 418 yes. of 18. Oh, no. It actually is less, it, it has less add-ons than the 2014 thing. Less add-ons. Was that changed, uh, Stephanie, or do you know what, do you know? I'm not sure what he's got. I don't know what he's talking about. 
Um, if, you will, if you will, uh, the the 18 thing only has 27 articles. The other one has 32 articles. Uh, the the ones at the end. Why don't you Why don't you send them to me? Do you mind? I, I don't mind a bit. Okay, I would like to look at it. I, you know, I would like to go back to the the latest version that we had. You know, because I'm sure there were things in there that we we would like. Yeah. But I, I personally think we ought to go to the best we had to start with. It gives yeah. gives us less to have to do as a committee. If again, if, according assuming we do that. Oh. Yeah. That same thing that you know, there is nobody more well versed in that document than we are. I mean, we, we live it and breathe it every single day, especially, really, especially me, just simply because it's what I do, the work that I do every day with, with P&I and, &I and everything else. So uh, I'm going to be the, the best uh, resource that you have to help you understand what we added from 2014 in terms of content through the consulting folks and what we added in 20, I'm sorry, 2018. From the consulting folks and what we added that were actually the rules that were already in place that we were using in 2014 and before and just incorporated them into the covenant so that's the discussion it's how you know how do you proceed from there but um well you and i may need to look at some of that stephanie yeah. is, is, is a yeah. if we if it, it, i guess if that's officially okay to do <laughs> but I, I mean it is we we're, we're on a committee at this point and we're and we're charged right. with correcting this so i think that's completely appropriate. We just need to we just need to sit down and determine what's the best time and kind of put together a working session, if you will, this right. Okay, well let, let me yeah, let me get that stuff from him too and let and I'll give me time to review that too and then get a little better idea of what, what we're gonna be talking about. And you and I'll holler I'll holler at you, you holler at me and we'll try to get together and look at it real quick sometime. Thank you. May I ask one question? This is Nikki. Sure. Or if you're asking me. Well, I'm asking everybody. Okay. On on Pego and Morello, were those approved pending Jason's approval, or were those held over pending Jason's approval? The way I wrote it up, the the sixty Pego is going to be an email vote, and we'll get back after we hear just a little bit of stuff. And I went ahead and called 94 Murillo approved with a note that will get that will require Jason's concurrent approval for working the right of way stuff. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Ken, you have anything? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Jen? No. I would move on. to adjourn. New business. I promise. Oh, I will. sorry. Carol will make something and I will bring them at the meeting when we meet at the Coronado Center. Now. Whoa. <laughs> well, and having said that, uh, it's a good point. I, I, I do expect us to be able to meet at the Coronado Center next time. I'll let you know for sure. Should be, the center should be back open and we should be able to meet in person next time. So. Uh, Dan, yeah, Dan, Ken Gordon. I do have. I'm sorry, I get one item. Uh, as you know, Nancy and John are packing up and leaving today for uh, Tennessee. I, I didn't um, know. Okay. Okay. I was over at their house. I was over at their house yesterday to Sounds see if I could. Help them. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I was over at their house yesterday to um, see if I could help anyway. The movers were there yesterday and they're finishing today and they're signing the uh, closing papers today. Um, and then they're taking off tonight. Um, I'm, I'm on a little group at the church, the Catholic church planning a um, reception dinner for them at the end of this month or the first of June, whenever they can get back. And they wanted to make certain that I brought up to the ACC members 
and, and the staff, of course, um, that we all will be invited to that reception dinner whenever it's finalized at the Catholic Church. So I wanted to just let you know that something is being planned for John and Nancy at a later date. Cool. Okay, nice. And, and I will keep everybody informed as uh, the committee at the church progresses. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. Bye, Good. Uh, Thanks. 11.40. See y'all. Bye. Bye.